Sound check, sound check, sound check. Hello, hello. Hello. Monday, Monday. Hopefully yep. you're not hopefully you weren't too busy. No, it's okay. I'm photoshopping here, so yeah. Ch uh, for anyone fan of uh, that, he's just testing stuff. He's not running anything. He'll only, he won't be on that long. He's testing stuff with Rory on, so he's live. He had to go live with it. Uh, I already talked to him about it. So. Aussie. Good to hear. Well, that's interesting. That's a blank screen. All right, we'll skip that one. <laughs> that's weird. Infinite Dimensions one just <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's like where where is the ad? Uh, always something, Anna. Yep. I have accidentally uh, nixed it. Hey, darling! Cool. Get out my pushes and then I will hit some shout outs here. That is weird. Whoops. Now that was the wrong button. What's that mean? Uh, what's that mean? Stereotypes of races. Hello, that means. <laughs> you know these uh, the 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 woke debate that oh. that. That I, yeah, the one we've had many times, and I've, I've been <laughs> no. criticizing old school for that too, because a lot of the the races are stereotypes. This guy, oh, you, I guess you're talking to Arthur about so. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I just take. Hey. But it's 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 one of these things that that we need to think about a bit when we game, what we want to convey, and, and what is appropriate and stuff. Yeah. True, but uh, yeah. I look at it this way. Um, the world of Greyhawk, the, the world of Greyhawk races. Well, even the term race, I think, is the, the wrong term. I, I like the, the 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 dwarfs and the elves and the gnomes and, and, and all that, but I don't like the term races. It's it's I want to call them something else, ancestries or or, or, or kings or something like that. I think is way more. Whatever. Yeah, species. I'm not sure. It sounds to me it's too scientific to me for not. Fantasy, but that's just me. Okay. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. No, I think that's a good good start, so to speak. And then, yeah. Hey, Caesar. But but uh, look at this. What the heck is going? So something, something's <laughs> up. Uh, something's up on my end there with blank. Uh, uh oh. Uh, I, yeah, have, no, I, I, I wonder if that's we'll the link. Yeah. I just, we'll see. You. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Going to big show. Thank you. Really. So, um, my point was that, but correct or not, Gary Gygax's races, species, and Greyhawk are all Lord of the Rings, right out of Lord of the Rings. Yeah. They are. I mean, dwarves, oh, yeah. spellcasters, you know, yeah, elves are de magic. definitely. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, so. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And, yeah. You know, can't teach me an old dog new tricks, I guess, and uh, just uh, but it works. Yeah. It works for us. It works. I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm old too, and, and, and a lot of my my uh, different creators are, are also typical fantasy in, in a lot of sense, but but not all of them. I try to my humanoids are more diverse than than, than they normally are. 
I think, uh -huh. in other, a lot of other campaigns. But some of the other ones are probably more stereotypical than some of these elves and I try to... Yeah. It's, uh... No, I always say, uh, hey, if someone wants to play a cat person in Tabaxi or whatever, have at it. But, you know, I got no problem with it. But just uh, in their game, it's, it's perfectly fine. Perfectly, perfectly fine. And it's a great thing about the game is it's so diverse as far as thoughts and rules. It's you know, a lot. There's a lot of direction to go in the game, which is really cool. So I like about it so much. <coughs> Plus, the Greyhawk setting, you know, has these realms, has dwarven realms, elven realms, gnomes, and Kron Hills, halflings. No half giants yeah. from there's like no half giants like Dark Sun. Dark Sun has half giants. Well, doesn't have half giants, so yeah, yes, that's it. Start capping to get going. Yeah, that's, I like that. That's a good term there. <laughs> High fantasy. Yeah, there that's you go, a good too. Alex. Yep. That's mm -hmm. another good one too. So for yeah. some reason, two of my ads aren't working. So we're gonna come on early uh -oh. tonight. I don't have it. Yeah. yeah. Sorry for pushing that out to you, uh, Curtis. There. So I, I you already told me you're wrong, but I'm just I'm going through the motions. My uh, as as you probably a lot of you don't know, and Curtis uh, to his uh, negative. Uh, I, I I didn't have I didn't get much sleep last night. It was, a, it was a very, uh, it was a very fun evening, to say the least. So, you know, but it was you know, much the second game, and it just hung out a lot last night. So, and that'll happen in two weeks too. We'll talk about that. Pushing, pushing. Yeah, we got a good. So, Eric might have kind of laughed at this. Uh, I guess we'll talk about that when I come live here topic on one of the uh, Facebooks. Live. I said a few minutes early because two of my ads were bjorked for some reason in my X split and uh, once again I have no idea why uh, you know but it's the way <laughs> the way of freaking everything that's happens with me on Twitch lately. Yeah, well, this is good. That's the point you got. See, Arthur, you, you already nailed that. Nailed it on the head. What we're gonna do here. So, yeah, I've always used Explain. Always Explain Broadcaster. Yep. I don't use OBS. For what I do, uh, the way I um, we'll come live here. Uh yeah, Boomer. So for, darling, for what I do, the way I do it with multiple cameras, it's way better than using OBS for having three, four live cameras. You know, and I'm not, I'm not paying for, uh, what's the one that Jimmy uses? <sighs> I forget which one, uh, Jimmy Duffy uses, but, uh, it's, it's like 1200 bucks. <laughs> uh -oh. uh, but I like, I like split, you know, it's a monthly license. It's no big deal there. Thanks to uh, I enjoy you. Trogues. Yeah. See, Trogues is good. Trogues <laughs> is good. That's uh, it's made in central PA there, Curtis. So you're good there. Hey, good evening, everyone. No, oh, I, I appreciate Hello. that, Lando. First question. Before we get into this, will someone tell me what exactly the term AD&D en uh, encompasses? Because this stupid chat, this stupid Facebook group, I know some of you belong to, the D&D the &D for old dudes. Some guy started a for fight on dudes? this. Never uh, heard of you that don't one. Wanna, you don't want to go there. Just trust okay. me. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so uh, I say it's just 1E2E. The 1E2E -E era is AD&D. Right, but like there's guys arguing, no, it's well, only the, one E. Uh, no, like, but oh those were the, those were the games that had they were actually named A D and D, one E two E. Right, so exactly. I, I, I totally agree. agree with you. Those are the A D and D are the one E two E. Right, Lando. Yeah. Yes. Well, someone else can go on there and on that post and argue argue it. I'm not getting involved yeah. in it. I was like, oh, this is painful. Yes. Yeah. Speaking of painful, all right. So you're like Border Watch, uh, Patriots. You look at other ones. I, I, I was thinking to myself. Yeah. Why did you pick these? Okay, good. That's a great question, Anna. Yeah. So, first off, I didn't have time to go deep into the uh, as, as as deep as I wanted to with everything going on into uh, the Greyhawk uh, Dungeon Magazine. So I wanted to save them, right? So we may do one this Sunday coming up. I'm not sure. But I picked these because of this reason. And Eric and Mona hit it on the head. And Arthur just alluded to it. 
So, and these two, plus there's some other ones. I got, I got two, I got some beyond this, right? Look, at these things are beat up pretty well. Well, the question is, why are they so beat up? They're really not that great of adventures at all. But there's data in this you can use in your campaign. I think that the best thing that we can do is learn what we can mine from this stuff. This, this, and also from the Castles supplement, which I thought it was in Strongholds. And I, I appreciate you mm -hmm. telling me Castle Hearts and Castles. So we yep. go look at that as well. Plus, we're going to look at a couple other things. Ha, 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 Right? Because there's battle systems in one of these, at least, uh, just to talk about it a little bit. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So tonight, what we're going to do is we're going to delve into having a little fun, talking about these adventures, maybe bring out some other ones, some of your favorites, and uh, uh, in the 2E era, that may not be that, favorites that may suck, let's be honest, all right? Now, I'm not talking about puppets level. Uh, but I'm talking about maybe there's some other ones out there. Maybe someone likes uh, one of the Vecnas or something. I have no problem with discussing. Or, or even the Ravenloft adventures that are 2E that you can really convert pretty easily into Greyhawk. Um, but I wanted to bring these up because these have some good information in them. And, let's, and we'll talk about them. So, hey, Greenleaf, are we going to look at how you think you're still a lord but you're actually a count? Well, I don't know what the difference... Uh, is a count better than a lord? I mean, I, I remember I can't change the name of the. It's a it's a character's name. It's not me actually. It's a character. So, found battle system box set in decent shape. Is Staten. Wow, that's cool. Well, not only curse do I have that, but these came out afterwards. These are actually have color pictures in them. They they were really high end, right? So here we go. Some more battle system miniatures, rules, and skirmishes. Yep. So. I got all this wonderful 2E stuff. And, and so, no mentioning Doom Grinder. Nah, the Doom Grinder is, is off limits. Doom Grinder is another great concept that you can change out. So, Anna, I know um, you had uh, these two adventures had influence on you for your maps. Correct? Oh, yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. But, uh, and in fact, if I especially, recall. Especially, uh, yeah, both of them. Yeah, sorry. But especially, Patriots of Ulick, you just switched mm -hmm. that area about a year oh, ago. Oh, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah gonna, I read it through again, and 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 people pointed it out to me, and I I must have forgotten it, which is weird because I I actually I have it in physical copy too, so I read it through, but I read it through so long ago, then then I forgot it when I actually mapped it. I think. Yeah, it's surprisingly thin. Adventure. Yeah, oh, yeah. It, <laughs> it's surprisingly thin. <laughs> it is surprisingly thin. Let me set up the giveaway yep. tonight. We're gonna do some classic D and D reprints. Uh, and look, the, the other great, the great one, uh, Treasures of Greyhawk, if we get, have enough time, we'll talk about some of the adventures in that again. Um, mm -hmm. And here I have a Treasures of Greyhawk reprint here I can give away, uh, but we'll have some other, have some other great stuff too if you already yeah. have it. So and just This one has out. some good, no, sorry. No, go for go. it, Anna, yeah. I was going to say, this one has some good aspects, really impressive aspects and some really messed up ones in my opinion we're but gonna start that, there yeah that's just my opinion <laughs> yeah. okay. mm -hmm. good to see everyone on a monday night so like yep. i said um schedule wise coming up we'll, we'll be on on this upcoming sunday the sunday after is the super bowl there's ain't no way at all uh, but the day after the super bowl monday what's that the 13th whatever day that is after the super bowl the monday night hi that is the prelude gabin for the fundraiser because that's the that's the, the Monday Sunday before the fundraiser that week and coming up, so we're gonna have that show on the Monday after the Super Bowl, the uh, the Gab and uh, fundraiser. Yep. When Jay, yeah, when I drive, at, yeah. So I'll have that all prepped up. But then again, I I'm gonna be I know Darling's gonna be on the first hour. I I, I set it up in blocks where, you, where guests come in between seven and eight or eight and nine, and they talk about what they're gonna run. Uh, I may have some sponsors come on. Um, yeah, so it'll be it'll be a fun time. It really will. So, all right. Second edition, my favorite, right? Well, let me let me fifty fifty between first and second. Stuff I love. I love specialty priests. I love elementalists. I love wild mages. I love a lot of the things that they made a lot more flexible. Like, for example, they made it that thieves could certain as an alternate rules. There's a ton of alternate rules in those uh, handbooks and, and, the play, and the actual base player's handbook rules. You have thieves choose their own stats. So once again, in order to, for Anna, what, another thing we did to make thieves of single class more powerful than multi-class, we allow only a single the single class thief, they can choose their stats 
where the percentages go in as opposed to multi-class where they go oh. to the table. That way, it's like having uh, fighters only can specialize at their straight class, not multi, like a fighter thief. So that was another thing we did. Um, and uh, But two, we had its drawbacks. Two, I mean, stuff was coming out every week, and no one could have, can't afford all of it, right? Green books, black, brown books, blue books. All it was the... Yeah, go ahead. So it was the first attempt by TSR back then to monetize D and D. Yes, absolutely. It, 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 it was because it was the first wave of player centric content. All these brown books and stuff. That was the first first time they they really attempted to sell stuff to players. Before it was player's handbook, and the rest was for DMs, and and players were not supposed to to see it or study it. And and then comes the wave of, of player kits and and all these special books for all the different classes and stuff. So so I guess from a marketing move, it was smart at least for the first some years. But then I get it deteriorated in some ways. But there's also some some fantastic content coming out in that era. So so it was a little bit like type monkeys with typewriters. You get everything from the the worst to the best. True. Absolutely true. And then you have, you have like first edition, you knew. Almost oh, no, but your mic oh. is up. Yep. Sorry. I am a little tired. Uh, first edition, you had every art module. You knew the, the name of the, of the author. Yep. I'm not trying to sound like it. Who is Paul Regal? I, I have no idea. Like, now, Anthony Pryor, I've heard of before in Patriots of York, yeah. right? But I have never heard of Paul Regal before. All right, so. They were really they were they had a lot of of people um, participating in that era, and it just mm -hmm. it seemed like there was no yep. dire the direction was really scattered across uh, all over the place. And I was excited when these both came out because they're both in my wheelhouse where we were playing at the time, right? But especially Patriots of Yule. Like I'm like, oh, this is really cool. You know, this is going to be great. This is you know, I'm gonna. They made a venture that I play in. This is 1992 or 93. 92. 1992 this came out. And we ran it once, and I'm like, Ugh. you know, it was kind of brutal. As someone said the other night, a first-level first, first level character saving all of uh, saving all of that northeastern corner of Yulik is kind of ridiculous, and I agree. But um, there's good stuff you can get out of it, and that's, I think, where uh, what we want to discuss tonight. So um, let's do this. And let me flip over to this. And we got some uh, we got some uh, things that obscure things too. So if we come out here and we pull out to mirror and we just pull all the way up to here onto your wonderful map and we we come into this area, blow this up. This is mostly the area we're going to be talking about. So we're all right in here, all the way up. Let me go up a little higher. But here is, and we're talking now. Um, we're talking. We're talking. Border Watch, right? We're talking this. Mm -hmm. we'll talk this first. Uh, border Watch. So this is post from the ashes. Yep. Wars are going on. What four to six characters levels? One to three. Right. Uh, so, hey, hey, Michael. A specific adventure for Greyhawk. Uh, here is the map attached inside. As you can see, there are locations on here. I don't. Were they all on the map before? Was Batlet on the map before? No, Batlet was not, and Martin. Morstan was not, Fendrilan was not, and Morstan, yeah, so, so there was a lot of them. Great Wall was, I don't think, on there either. So so most of these things were, were introduced in this adventure, which I think is one of the strong suits. And also, I have to say, production values. This one, I think, came out as an a, a adventure companion to I Use the Evil. I, yes, I, I think I think it came out at the same time. I, I think my my memory might be talking twenty five years ago, so it might be or, or a little bit more or or some somewhere around there. But so I I think I bought both of them at the, got them at the same time, and and I must say the production values are excellent. I love this adventure design. It speaks Greyhawk to me. You have the Greyhawk logo and 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 the 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 art in the front is good, and and even inside and stuff. I, I like the. the this it kind of this was one of the best eras when it comes to production values for for Greyhawk adventures. And, so, uh, so 
yeah. Chanel Jackways did the cover, and the cover's fantastic. It's really yeah. a nice cover. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I really, I really like it. Maybe, yeah. maybe I don't like the skin color of the first dude here, but but it, that, purple. That, that's uh, yeah, that's very minor, so to speak. Otherwise, I love the 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 image. I love the how the landscape and how the 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 how the scene is set up, so to speak. I love the composition of this. It's fantastic. So I just love it. Basically, this is another low-level adventure, and mm -hmm. um, but what's cool is you can see the style inside the writing. And here you got you got and then you got locations. And another thing is you can pull these locations out and use them in your campaign, and not mm -hmm. kind of almost Hamlet like. I'm not saying this is like anything like Hamlet, but I'm saying there's you know the end of the walk and wench now you get the bloody axe in yeah very yeah. Big, i mean the cartography is really simplistic right that, well that. they just reused the darlene map with a few added stuff yeah. and then the even the local cartography and stuff is is bare minimum yeah it's, that's it's, what, yeah specifically yeah it's that, it's yep. definitely bare minimum it, it's nothing more it's the absolute necessary and no extra fr fr frills or or, or right. bonuses which is to me that's the weak spot. They put so much wonderful things in, in the layout generally. It's good. But on the other hand, they skipped a few things that are kind of weird to me. One is the, the logo and, and the Greyhawk logo on the second page. Right, is, one's color, one's not. Yeah. And, and also, these are, are kind of blurry and they put them in there. So someone didn't do their job and find the right logo. So oh, this weird. is, I, I put, that. I think this is because it was early days for digital um, layout and stuff. So they probably had long, wrong resolution or, or something like that. So it became wow. blurry and it's not that. printed. <laughs> yeah. Pretty bad. So, so it's one. Yeah. So it looks kind of crappy. So, so there's a couple of oversight, but I think the intention is great. And, and I love the layout and, and how this well, is set up, so to speak. Outside it's two words. On the inside it's one. Yeah, exactly. So, so even <laughs> editing is skimmed wow. here and there. So the intentions oh. are fantastic in that department, but they skimped over things and Holy they rushed geez. it a little bit. So yeah, so so it, it's kind. Of, I think it was supposed to be exactly. one word all, all everywhere, and then then it kind of yeah. Yeah, and that, that's that's what I wanted to discuss, Curtis. Mm -hmm. You're saying, and that's why mine yeah. get used is yeah. the points of reference in here that you can utilize um it's it's it is on the yeah. realm of eyes the evil and the marklands and that's mm -hmm. where that's what yeah. you're going to utilize this for you can you can run the adventure but then yeah. when you run it oh you're done it right and then what do you do of all this you know yeah. so um, but and one thing to mention more sure. when we talk about the layout production values, these have the right golden bronzy images. I think the from the ashes box set was supposed to have this, but they printed it in silver instead of gold bronze. Because I remember when when we got the shipment, we got a a, a box or, or two of a from the ashes box set. There was a special note inside saying, "We're so sorry." that it was a failure at the printers, blah, 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 and, and told the story. If if I knew now I should have taken a picture or saved that, that little sticker or, or note or something that was in the box because that was really cool. So it was like printing error or something. So they probably printed it wrong, but this is what it was supposed to look like. So so it, it's kind of it's kind of an, an, an interesting little anecdote. So uh, you start out in Great Wall. And, yeah. Uh, once again, everything everything in Fiorendi that's around or anything that is in Shieldlands that's around is turned into a massive stronghold instead of just a farming community, right? Um, and uh, you have yeah. Arthur Jakartai is here because uh, he has relocated from the mystical, magical invasion of the Shieldlands by the Horn Society in the, in the Free Seeker box set into he comes over to Fiorendi now um, for some reason, right? He's and he gets titled, and and if you're, I still don't understand how that happens. No one really explains it, but that's just uh, you know that's just one of those things. So um, uh, and and basically um, from there, uh, you're boring. It says you do, you do not lead a very exciting life in Great Wall. Okay, so you're boring <laughs> people. That's great to know that. Yeah. Note, note that you are very droll. Um, and then uh, there's an adventure, uh, the adventure summa summary, uh, summary uh, gives you, and what's cool is you're going to travel in between some of the locations, which is, can be kind of neat if you're into that style of play. Like I know in Anna's game, if she, if she did up, uh, if she does I, the, all the, the terrain. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, this this adventure, I love the setup for this adventure. The problem is that they screwed up the geography. So so the, the, the premise of the adventure is that you are going to t go from a secure location, you're going to bring resources to the front along the vein and resupply the, the strongholds and stuff to make sure so I use can't so to prop them up against invasion that's the problem and then i use has some spies and there are some some altercations on the way and and to to mess things up so to speak that's the, the premise of it the interesting thing is that that they they have that strong point that you supply from is great wall castle that is 150 or 180 miles away from the the thing when they already have Strong, strong point. They have Morstan, they have Grabford and right. stuff, meaning they wouldn't hire a little band of adventurers to bring the resources to a major city. The major city and the major town will have these resources. So it doesn't really make sense. They they put these places, meaning they add uh, uh, several of the Fenderland and, and, and Morstan and stuff. They add these places to the setting and then they don't use them properly in right. the scenario. And to me, that that is weird because the, the obvious for the adventure would be to start at Morstan saying, well, the resources are here. We need to disperse them out along the vein and, and, and so on. But I think it's part of the general because you, when you use a map of the resolution of Darlene map, you want to spread it out over across the map so it looks cool. So it's more like the, the adventure suffers from only having the existing map, so to speak, because the scale doesn't really fit the story, in my opinion. So I think it's a great story and, and a wonderful premise that I would love to do. But I will I will start instead of... of, of uh, a great wall castle that is way too far away from the, that. That's like a leftover interior into for you. Yeah, it's like that, it's nowhere yeah. near here. I, that's exactly. So, yeah. So yeah. so I I will start. I will put Morstan or Fenderlan or one of the staging points along the vein, and then I will create a few strongholds or keeps or, or or camps or something like that, and then you go out and 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 resupply them. So, right. so if you just adjust the, the geography and stuff, then I think it's a great idea for an adventure. So it just got the geography a little bit screwed up, but but otherwise well, I think it's yeah. A good and there's one. something yeah. else that's majorly screwed up. I think you know, and you know about that too, and we'll get yeah. to that because mm -hmm. uh, from this, uh, I think it's Jotaro is the one they're trying to the the Iusians want to kill, um, and then uh, as you as you go, you end up in uh, Barduk. Which is in fact the same location as Port Valor is on the map, right? And that's an yep. issue, mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Yep. And 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 once again, what's really good about this too, just like the I use the evil and the Marklands, you have really nice detail blocks for characters. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and that, so that's a good thing. Uh, yeah. yeah. Meaning characters, uh, the the basic plot idea, the characters, and and a lot of the places, except the place you start at, then then. Then there's a bunch of cool stuff to take from this. Right, definitely. So, uh, uh, so uh, Jesmalis is Jotaro, and he fifth level. So remember, if you're doing first through third level characters, he's fifth. Okay, he's a little bit higher. Yeah. Once again, this isn't something earth shattering that's that's going to determine yeah. the whole end of of Fear mm -hmm. uh, on this one. Although the other one that we're going to discuss, <laughs> it, yeah. it, 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 but, it could. Yeah. But then you have one thing in the backdrop that I think why they chose uh, Great Castle is that because, um, and that's one of the biggest mistakes from Carl Sargent, because his Iusian invasion of Furyundi doesn't, it, it makes perfect sense that Ayus wanted to invade Furyundi. The way he executed the invasion seems to be to be complete bonkers. That you form that line straight across the country doesn't make sense. Right, you should because be ripping Because that, that, will, be, areas, that yeah. will be kind of military suicide for Ayus to spread out like that. He will attack across and, and, uh, and invade the eastern and the western bit, not this northern southern bit because that, that is to, to spread himself in unnecessarily so 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 in that sense it doesn't make sense so so that's why i think it, the great wall castle and and those uh, the lines that were in the middle there should not be in the middle that that should be kind of territory that is the furthest away from from i use so so and and seems to be kind of empty so i i, I think that that Carl Sargent was wrong in how he executed the the IUCN invasion. That was kind of didn't fit the bill, really, in my opinion. But 
but and and this adventure suffers slightly in the setup from that because they had to start with what happened in from the ashes and stuff but that's minor you can just tweak that and and get exactly. the adventure off to a good start but yeah. and what, also oh, sorry what's what's again it shows that Maybe Carl Sargent wasn't in military, didn't understand military tactics as much. No, probably not in with, that sense. But yeah, but but know, he 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 understood the polit, polit, politics of it. I think really really well, and that if, was awesome. If yeah. he was, all right, let, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt on this. I'm sorry, going off on a tangent here. If he was, yeah. if he was alive in World War II, and I'm assuming he was, I'm assuming he was that old, Carl. Uh, maybe, right? yeah. Mm -hmm. He probably yeah. imagined a line. Maybe that's what he was thinking. Yeah, but the Maginot line is something you build before the war. Right. right. The, the, well, they this, were building. This... They were building. There was a, the flare line and the raising line. There were two of them, right? Oh, oh, yeah, exactly. But the those were built. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. But it, to me, it's like, and and if you want to stave off an IUC an invasion, you will build a wall along the Vang, not across yeah, the northern. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so it, to me, that doesn't true, make true. sense. So, so, so that part, and I'm going to change that on my campaign map. So, 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 so I'm going to to rectify it and and change it so that's one but but the idea that i use invaded for yundi i think makes perfect sense it was more like how he was executed that that a, an eastern and a western attack would be i think the most logical so for yundi has to fight on two fronts and i like how they didn't get that far as composing the shield lands i'm good i'm glad that he didn't oh yeah like yeah he, he, that well. he's saved for yundi yeah. so to speak so yeah mm -hmm. What's, uh, here, here's a spot where we didn't do one when we did encounter tables. This is a good encounter table here uh, yeah. on the trail because mm -hmm. this is right yeah. along the waterway. So you know you get yeah. orc bandits, you know all sorts of all, all sorts yeah. of uh, neat and, stuff here. Okay. Yeah, I can imagine if if I when I develop the map I'm doing for Altamira and and the Southern Shield then now to have that type of map when you play this campaign then that will be awesome because then you can do the overland hex crawls kind of thing. You it, it, you can treat the whole area as a big dungeon and you yes. can go around and, and do all the kind of ambush and you can get like, oh, we go through this little valley and, and we try to hide out here and, and the enemies are hiding out there, etc. So you can really get like a cat and mouse. You can get overland chases. You can, you can go up and on a... a high point and and survey the the terrain and stuff like that so so a lot of that kind of tactical overland play that you will have like the instead of a dungeon you will have you can treat the whole campaign area as adventure area as a, as a dungeon so, and and that yeah as you continue on your maps this is that's where this becomes a little more you combine this yeah. with mm -hmm. in this case on this side in for you kind of this with the yeah. mark lands reference if you're on the other side, on the Shieldland side, you combine, you use the Eye Evil reference, and you yep. got a lot of data points that you can use mm -hmm. to give your campaign, you know, and like I said, you don't need to be an over canonista type you don't have to know no, exactly. little detail is not yeah. necessary and the problem is that because if you are a, a super canonist on every little detail that's when you start noticing that there are things that don't really match that well and, <laughs> yeah. and some some distances becomes impossible or or takes way too much longer than they are depicted in the adventure and, and stuff so so yeah so uh, you go right into a prototypical here comes an ambush right mm -hmm. right at uh, some uh, some destroyed wagons uh you know uh Hey, if you fall that's, for that's, it, you fall for it. <laughs> well, yeah, but it, that, that's good. It, yeah. It's meaning a lot of these encounters and the names and stuff like that, they are perfectly, I, I, I like them. I like the, the setup, the general idea behind the adventure, I think is one of the best ones that really better ones. So so it's, it's yeah, it's more like the, some of the premises, the, how the geography is set up. Otherwise, I really like this adventure. Yeah. Okay. You make it, hey, hey, Dave, you make it to Fort Belvoir. Um, and, uh, yeah. You know, so you go on point to point. It's almost like a trek along mm -hmm. the Vang uh, River, yep. mm -hmm. um, which is which is a neat thing. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and and then there's, uh, uh, I think there's an ambush here. Yep. Another well, ambush. Yeah. Yeah, and that there's some some, uh, yeah. and we shouldn't spoil it too much, but there's some 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 uh, IUC and spies and some of people course. you shouldn't have trusted and and stuff like that, which makes the adventure cool. And and there's some twists and turns to it that I'm not I I don't remember how how fixed they are or if that is up to the DM or or or, or some I forgot about that. But there are some 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 people I, that yeah, yeah I believe I believe that uh, it's within each uh, location or a couple. But remember, okay, they're yeah. they're, they're all like that. Uh, uh, Expedition Ruins of Greyhawks the same way. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we'll be talking a little bit 
a little bit about that uh, here. I'll do a quick foreshadowing because I at least got something planned this week. And that yeah. is I use in his empires Wednesday night. Okay. So we'll be talking about all his spy network mm-hmm. on Wednesday, which uh, where yeah. it's all over the place uh, amongst other things. So yeah, that'll be and Wednesday. Also, this adventure is also something I think you can easily scale up. You can easily, I, I think, uh, when I see this, I can easily imagine running this type of adventure and use this as a base for, for, for inspiring me for a campaign that starts at first level and go all the way yeah. up to like 10th level or Absolutely. something, 8th or 10th level. Absolutely. Yeah. You, you can, I can see, and especially since you are in the area where you have the enemy territory, I can see as they level up, I can see they go after the Iusian threat. They might even cross the, the river at night or, 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 or do like a little kind of go and, and, and do some, 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 some beach operations on the other side of the Veng to, to go after some of them or, or follow up leads and stuff like that as they move up the, the, the food chain, so to speak, and becomes more and more in, into the operation and stuff. And they might go and assist other groups that go and, 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 and they will become the, not the basic campaign or, or guards of, of, of the, the, um, the, the, the goods and stuff, but they can, they can actually become the, the the ones that go around and and do the 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 making sure that the other groups and assist the the lower ones and stuff like that. So, so yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, yep. so Fort Belvoir is always under siege. It would be a good place to start. Uh, yeah, as it appears because it's uh, yep. you know it's always being attacked. If you look by the map, I mean it's not. Oh, it's across small lag. So, so yeah, yeah. and and they will also be cool. Like you can start out by by staying at at some local one just a few miles away and and do things and stay overnight and you can have some skirmishes and stuff. And then you can move further away and then you can go to Fort Belvoir and 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 assist. And there can be a major IUC and assault where where you like seven eight level or something. Right. And you can fight some big 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 things and and stuff like that. Or you might want to go out and go on the other side and 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 when you're really high if if you go up to like 12 15th level you can be the little special forces to go out there and 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 nip them in the bud a bit or or, or do something like that if they take prisoners for instance it's your job to go on the other side of the river and bring them back again dead or alive or, or something like that and or capture some some IUC and commanders or something like that when and and wait in the wings on the and then when when the assault comes you run up in the behind or sneak up behind them and and kill one of the commanders meaning there's plenty of interesting possibilities for high level play as well as low level play in this and a matter of fact we'll when we get to um when we get to patriots of yulik it's kind yeah. of i know it's further south but that's kind of what the knights of yulik do all along that border with the jewel with all the forts mm-hmm. just jump back and yep. forth so, yeah. they're kind of a lot of similarities in that absolutely sense. and that's why yeah. i'm kind of drawn to the details here um and uh so as you move on to barduk Hey, Will, what's going on, man? By the way, Will, I got Hello. them all. Thank you. Yep. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, look dun, at dun, that. Dun. Yep. So uh, we have at least four of these to give away for the fundraiser. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Yep. Yeah. Very cool. That's my copy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, man. We got them. Hey, Frilly. Yeah, it's it, it, it's uh, it's really nice. My guys were looking through them last week, and uh, they were very impressed. So uh, this is kind of a... Uh, a cool map here showing mm-hmm. a, a, a fort. Man, there's a they get um, and you get ambushed like every every encounter is almost like an ambush attempt in this yeah. in this one. So it but gets that, a little that old. is in the nature. If you, yeah. if you hauling goods on the IUCN border, you can kind of expect ambush after ambush. And I think that is also, I think really important. If you want as a GM, if you want to run this, you really need to start looking at different tactics and stuff so so you don't repeat yourself you have to make the each ambush be a little bit different you have to use different emphasis some ambushes can be heavy on spell casting and some of them are heavy on ranged weapons some of them are ha- sneaky stealthy affairs that come from really close up some of them are mounted assaults that comes like mounted knights and ride up and and throw spears and 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 what not run you over so try and and even if the stat blocks here might not give all that 
invent some of that yourself, so to speak, yep. and, and make them different from a te both technical, but also from a perspective. Some of the forces that attack might be very much hollering, yelling, trying to fear you to, to run. And if you don't run and you hold your ground, then they might scatter and don't do much. The other ones are very probing. And if you, if you kind of are there to fight, then they will go the other way around. They might lash out at you fearless and and really really quick and then dash back the other ones are more sitting down putting their shields down and 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 defend against you and and hack at you for for long term so to speak and also use multiple waves of attacker don't show your cards all at once send in a small group just to test out the party and once you figure that out then you have the main force looking at a distance so they know who to attack and then send in the the, the big wave in in some from some other direction when they have figured out where the, the spell casters are and and all the other stuff so so the first part of an ambush might only be in order to to gain Intel Thing. And and as a re reconnaissance move, and then the big thing comes afterwards when the the enemy knows, so to speak. So so you can you can you can make sure you vary the ambushes according a lot of these themes Explain. in order to make them more interesting. And what you can do is, um, especially those only well, we play two characters, so it's different <laughs> for us. But, um, but I, I, like, I left at Moose. Yeah. <laughs> yep, <laughs> I tried to. Yes, yeah, exactly. That's that, that's that's part of the fun there. Moose. Yeah. But uh, what you can do is, say you have four individual characters playing, um, you're going to, you could take command of units instead. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying run yep. battle system. You don't need to. Oh, but you can, yeah. You can, you can. Yeah. Uh, uh, but yeah. you can also uh, run it in in, uh, in just uh, the style I run it in, uh, yeah. where you have in, even mm -hmm. on, on and, grab paper or whatever, you can do it. So. Yeah. And you can also add some, This is, meaning, remember, old, really old school, there were usually henchmen, meaning you can hire henchmen to flesh out your party. This might be a really good uh, area to have that, to have a bunch of henchmen. And also, especially since a lot of this adventure, you're supposed to guard a caravan and supply wagons and stuff. So, so, so that means that you not only have to worry about the enemy attacking, you also have to worry about all the people being attacked. Meaning, yes. are they? Meaning, you can. They can get scared and running around everywhere. Meaning, and some of them get captured and killed. So your job is not only to manage the enemy; it's to manage people on your own side and horses and wagons from from catching fire and stuff like that. So, so, so it becomes very much. And and you as a DM, you need to to manage all these NPCs, including horses and equipment, in an interesting way. Meaning things go kaboom and and yeah. and, and fall into the Ooh. river and and break down so you can't move them, etc., etc., etc. So so there is a lot of stuff like this. So write down first. Try to come up with all the possible things that can happen, and then you list a few, and then you spread them out over the encounter. So you make sure that they are are kind of whether will be a significant factor meaning uh, are the roads muddy and or or dry is it rainy so you can't see anything windy so you can't hear right. so you can't use ranged weapons properly magic etc so yeah so um question and uh, yeah. uh what is pan gate I'm not really sure what Pangate was. It was something that I think it's something from Living Greyhawk. That's my be. guess. Okay. Yeah, and yeah. it's it's it's. Uh, I think it's something that popped up in one of the LG uh, adventures. Okay. That that yes, that I I placed there. So yep, Boulder Ford is one of these that they came up from 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 there. So yeah. So here's a little interesting thing. So you get down here and you you get to you make it the first whole part of the adventure is just a tr a traveling caravan. That's all it is. And you get to Barduk, and then that's yeah. when Jotaro asks you, you know, to do this secret mission. Right? And then, because you have these, I believe it's these uh, uh, children, right? You have uh, so, some, uh, here, Sarah Jean. You have uh, these Shieldland orphans. So, but Barduk, and, and here's where I go off on a little bit of a tangent. Mm -hmm. Someone doesn't, wasn't paying attention to what someone else was doing. So we have the castle's reference guide. Yep. And then inside it is Castle Heart. Well, it's in the exact same location. <laughs> well, no, they are opposite side of the river, thankfully. Oh, oh, they are, but not the town. Port Valor is what they say is on the other side, 
yeah. right? But yeah, yeah. So, so. I, it, yeah, but yeah. So I, I put Bardock Port Valor is on the yes. southern side of of the Crystal River, and 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 Castle Heart is on the northern one, and right. and we can assume that these are big rivers, so that that they are rivers are like at hundreds of yards across at least. Depending on maybe in the summer there might be when the, oh, nice. the lows right. that might not be that wide, but at least the river banks when they are flooded are probably <laughs> close to a mile across. Yeah. So this is from the castle's reference. It's hard to find, but this yeah. thing is really detailed up now. Whether the castle mm -hmm. is done properly defended wise is another uh, is for conjecture. And this is all battle. This is all for battle system. This is a battle system sub reference. Uh, guide this they um, they have the first one I believe is um, uh, you know against the Zentarum and Forgotten Realms so they have a Forgotten Realms one in here Darkhold right and then and then the, next, the second one is is Castle Heart thanks hey Sean. didn't realize you were live man well, if you're still on maybe we'll all right we'll we'll, we'll hit you up okay. Good to see you, man. So, but this thing is, wait a minute, that's detailed here. Let me get by this. That's Here's Castle Heart. Castle Heart has a lot of rooms, a lot of locations. It reminds me of Keep on the Borderlands. It's, it's even bigger, actually, the level of detail and all the, ta uh, so, and it's not, like, mentioned at all in, so it, uh, it's not there. I mean, you would think you this would be the place you would stop, right? in that adventure mm -hmm. it's just not mentioned so it's not there and uh but here here's the here's uh the picture of it so so anna how technically how uh how do you read yeah it? we we yeah we dis we discussed this in a fantasy mapping show i think we back did. in the yeah. when we dis is castles and this this it's an interesting design because yeah. the design of the sure. castle is from the canon age it's one of these star forts where you right. have open you have open Thanks, wide on top of the crenellation. So you that are supposed it's like a combination of a medieval fortress, but built and constructed like one for the cannon. So so if you take away the crenellation and make the 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 walls instead of straight with crenellation on top, you make them earth mount and and you you have like a, a like a, a, a wooden a, a, an earth walls earth stone wall and then you put cannons behind it. That's the fort is designed for that. Right, right. It's not. That, that's it's not that, for that's yeah exactly. <laughs> so so it's it's a fort that is designed for the. Yeah. Late late fifteen early sixteen hundreds maybe Throughout. down into the seventeen like the sixteenth yeah. century seventeenth century there are numerous ones built some of them in North America as well that are built according to this design very common if you that there are several cities in 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 the world that has Copenhagen has a a, a really oh. Oh. good one that is still standing that are almost identical to this one that that is still standing and they're built for Sweden have a, have a few of them too but none to that are restored or or in that working order so to speak and they were all built to have cannons on top Wasn't so the Henry this style too that might be, yeah. yeah. That, that, that it's a very common one because the the, the idea of having a, a star shape is that the cannons can one side can shoot along the wall and the other side. So if you try to storm it, the cannons, if you storm it on one area, cannons from at least two directions can, can fire at you. So you can clear the walls, meaning yeah. normally the cannon will have a problem once you're close to the walls, but then the cannons on the other side can shoot alongside the wall. And and this one, normally you had had shapes that were almost 90 degrees or, or you had, yes. Yeah, so so, so almost, there was, yeah. and, and, and a lot of them also have bastions, these towers that stuck out from the wall so they can shoot and some of them had their cannons lined up along the wall so if you storm the wall then cannons will and 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 muskets and stuff like that will shoot alongside the walls so th this is a fortress that is probably too modern in its design to be a fantasy one for arrows and 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 stuff like that but well it's still cool you yeah? could replace it with Ball ballast, well, they're dead, but they're just uh, uh, siege yeah. weapons. 
I don't know about trebuchets, but catapults or even oh yeah, exactly. You, you, spellcasters. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I would I would suggest yeah. that we make the tower each bastion tower a bit bigger and put some some heavy like siege weapons and stuff on top of them, and 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 then they could fire from stuff and then make the walls a little bit higher and and a little bit shorter. So I'm I'm thinking about de redesigning it a little bit, but I'm still trying to figure out what kind of heavy war machinery would be appropriate in my Greyhawk campaign. So so I'm 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 still working only mainly on the evil side, what I use and others are using because the characters are often going into the enemy, but I also have to think about the other side. And and a lot of places have been taken over by one or the other side through history. So 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 that this, but Castle Heart was one of these that would never take in. I think it was it stood right. through the war. So yeah, and it's a cool concept, and you can always mm -hmm. you know, do what you want with it and all. And and can, but it is all Greyhawk. These are all Greyhawk. Published yeah, you source. can. Mm -hmm. yeah. and you can you can make a fantasy version of it. You don't have to change that much, but you have I mean, to change a few things. Here. I think so. I mean, yeah. yeah. So just getting in, you can bit. see how, how. Yeah. You know how how they've set traps up getting mm -hmm. in. So. It, yeah, and look, it goes on and on and on. Every every yeah. room, every building is detailed in here. Yeah. So you have a lot of of of, of neat. And it, in the module, you had the there was a big poster with that image that is on the cover. So, absolutely. So, which, which is kind of sad that they they had a, they didn't think more of the design when they actually made such a an effort in making a huge big poster out of it. So. Uh, and that poster's r rare to have, so um, yeah, yeah, definitely is cool. It is, um, like I said, if it's our thing, if you can find it and you can find it inexpensively, get in the poster. Hey, cool. I have mine, but I don't know what case it's in. It's not out. I couldn't find it. So, yeah, uh, I, I, yeah, I've lost my 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 other stuff sits somewhere else, but I, this is the Greyhawk bit, so I put that right. among my Greyhawk stuff. The the rest sits on some shelf somewhere <laughs> around in the room here. So yeah. But you could run a whole campaign out of here easily. Oh easily. yeah, exactly along the Veng. I think it's it's yeah. a, it's a great area because you have a good side and an evil side, and and there is like a this border area. You can you can go easily have safe harbors, and then you can do expeditions daily, weekly, or or or, or per session over to the evil side, and you can yeah. So so it's 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 a very target rich environment. So so it's it's a great, but now, it should have a, a big detailed map yeah these stat blocks the way these are set up in typeset remind me of morning kane's fantastic adventure kind uh -huh. of with yeah those. it's not in the style of from the ashes or uh, or or eyes the evil or whatever it's in that uh, it's in a different style so yeah. and then uh, you have sir calaman that's and true have, yeah, yeah. They're, they're different yep mm -hmm. yep and then erica valuna bishop Farris. Yeah. so you got you got um but it was second edition it was a very experimental time so to speak they tried everything under the sun almost there's a, both in layout and 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 in how they did things in editing and stuff but it was also a technological change not only a new edition computer aided design and 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 all that started to come into picture too so i think that also meant a lot of changes how they produced the stuff and then a lot of new rules with battle system and and all these kind of Extra yep. crunch and fluff. And here's a battle, uh, a battle system scenario: uh, raiding yep. raiders across the Vang, which you can set up um, if you're interested in playing battle system. And there's multiple scenarios for like um, an assault on a, a, a complete assault on this uh, keep with all. Here's all yep. the rosters to use. I would never do this. It's too much. Uh, you know me, I prefer using D and D rules and having the actual minis and having that on the tabletop. So um mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, yeah. Absolutely, uh, Orchid. The stuff uh, for Greyhawk, yeah. There's some good stuff. There's some average stuff too. And I think what we're this is the, this is a this is a niche product, right? Castles. It was very niche. Mm -hmm. Whereas Border Watch and Patriots Ulick are adventures that were thrown into the ground. They're in the campaign setting. 
Yeah, they were much more standard fare. Fair, yeah. Right. This and was a way to to spread out and and launch a whole new product category with yep. battle system and stuff. So yeah. Absolutely. So uh, it's it's done very well. And then where's this one? This is Dragonlance Drungar. Look. Yeah, I think it was one one in each main so campaign one setting. Too? Well, I'm not. I, I okay, forgot. It's answer. it's a Greyhawk, a Dragonlance, and and affordable Should castle i forgot where yeah. the heck that was Punch but it's that. yeah it's kind of funny because there is at the end of the affordable castle there is a, a castle contract where you <laughs> where you can sign and you have to read you you can tell what you have to do and, and so on as a castle lord it, it's kind of especially in these ogl times it's kind of funny to have a fantasy oh, co contract so yeah that's cool yeah Here's King, oh here's King A's Unicorn Mirror too. Okay, there he is. Mm -hmm. I knew he yep. was in here somewhere too in a different uh in Dragonlance. So you have um that conflict, right? Because it says uh uh if we go to this and we come here uh and you're at Barduk and you are so uh, and it says right across from the Castle Hard is Port Valor, they're in the same spot. But mm -hmm. Port Valor is not detailed, really. So there you go. So no, exactly. So I, I, yeah. the, the icons are supposed to be across the river, but but this scale is kind of hard to to right. convey it. Right. I put them next next to each other, so the river is actually the Crystal River is in between them. So yeah. Yep, one of each, definitely Mac. One of each. So it was, uh, it was, you know, an interesting. Yeah, and there, as you can see, there, there it is on this. And map the, here. the interesting yeah. castle heart is not on, uh, on, on, on this map. <laughs> or any other map, you. It's yeah, only which on is yours. kind of weird because the castle heart had been out when Border Watch was done, I think, because this one is earlier than this. I have to double check now, but. One uh, didn't know what the other one was doing. A lot of cases. Yeah, this is from ninety three. This is ninety three, and this is. Uh, this is ninety, yeah. So Border yeah. Watch is three three years after after. Uh, after this, and so of course Castle Heart should have should been be on that there. map since it's one of their right. kind of main products, so to speak. But that's the way it was. Second edition, I don't know if they intentionally was because they made you buy things, but if you get the eyes, the evil reference, I always this always made me laugh. So, and then the specialty priest of Ayus is all set in there. And then it says these spells, blah blah blah. They're in the they're in the cards in the from the uh, from the uh, ashes box set. Mm -hmm. That's the only place they are. And then yep. there's a spell on the back of the Thassalos that's only there but not listed there. So mm -hmm. the spells are all yeah. over the place. Yeah. And I'm like, my gosh, didn't someone like coordinate all this? Obviously well, not. I, you know. Yeah, I think part of it was that you were supposed to buy all the products, so that's why they didn't want to repeat things. And also, I think it's part of the yeah part of the fact that no one had the the supreme <laughs> overview of of things and kept a, a, a really because this is still the days before you had good databases. And, and you couldn't build this consistency and stuff. And people came and went. So, right. so after after four or five years, there was someone new to do it. And 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 so there was little consistency. And and yeah. And also I think that each column in in, in these were valuable. So so mm -hmm. reprint the spell meant that you had to take something else out because they don't they don't have that many pages in them. So so That's so true. every every little thing counted like today we can easily make a web enhancement or even printing is way cheaper per page than it was back then so i, want, I also want to note something in here uh and they said oh this never happens well remember this happened in rogues gallery in the 70s mm -hmm. lizard man ranger oh the okay they, yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yep but that i that I guess it's natural. People that write adventures want to break the rules because they want more variety and stuff. Right, People who, right. might, who write the rules want to have things that are consistent and neat and, and tidy so players don't go off the be the chart too too often, so to speak. So there's a conflict of, of interest there. But classic modules or could get some more get some more good adventures. So it's a good one for yeah. you tonight. And once again, I, I always we're gonna be talking about this a little bit tonight too. If you already have it, great. But this is, you know, this is something really good during second edition. Mm -hmm. So yep, yep, and it's also a real beefy booklet compared to 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 the other ones we're talking about here now that are not that yes, absolutely not that big. This one is is Castle Heart is good because all the the goodies that comes with it. But and, yeah, and yeah. that's it. So not to go off on a tangent. Um, oh, please, it do. can happen 
their rules are set for as guidelines and yeah. as you can see they broke them themselves with Phoebus and uh, I forget the name of the uh, centaur uh, as well, you know, uh, because, you know, they were reincarnations or whatever back in the day. And then this lizard man here, it's still, you know, you don't have lizard men rangers in second edition. Maybe in third it starts coming out. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, Neo Genes is, uh, well, Neo Genes is space things too. They're Mac, so uh, you yeah. know I'm not a, but, uh, I'm not 100 percent mm -hmm. a fan of, of 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 creatures from space, but it's it's yeah. good. Mm -hmm. But I also have one theory also when it comes to 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 the fact that that things became more of a straitjacket in third edition and later because then you had organized play, and organized play when you're supposed to have a campaign that that everybody's supposed to play more equally and you you can take a character and you should go from 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 place to place play with different dms and stuff so the rules by necessity became more of a straitjacket and both more explanatory and also more kind of everything was detailed out second edition was still no one had huge organized play so it was much more like this is written for people to run at home and 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 to interpret more than to yeah. play exactly as written so to speak so that's why i think that there's a lot of things you can break in especially in the old school there was a lot of of, of dm fiat that that the, the dm had to come up and interpret and and figure it out and decide how to solve it in once you come to organized play you then you need to to rein that in a lot, so to speak. So 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 there will be much more equal chance for or the, the adventure is supposed to play out more the same each time you play it, and that requires a different tool set in order to do that. So you end up going to the crags and mines, and uh, and there's you know I use in secret bases and stuff, and this is probably one of the worst maps I've ever seen. This is bad, right? Oh I yeah, mean, it's 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 wow. too, so simple. In 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 a professional published adventure that you pay money for yeah, in this day and age, this would true. never fly. So so yeah. yeah. But we also have to realize this is a time long before you had these kind of cool computer tools and and all the fancy stuff. It was way more expensive to produce a. a good looking map back then than it is compared to today yeah so uh yeah and then uh you will finish up and be successful uh you know there's the defeat of the elders or uh elders of the orcish warband and, yeah. and uh, that'll uh stop i use from some of his machinations there um and there's always a matter of i use's revenge so it's a small mm -hmm. prick which yeah. it should be at first, second, and third level, right? Exactly. Yeah. You're just supposed to swing things one yep. way or the other at this yep. this juncture in, in, in the main conflict, so to speak. So, yeah. Making Greyhawk your own is absolutely the case. That's what mm -hmm. you want. So that yeah. is that is the wonders of Fury Undy and yeah. the wonders and, and, of, of yeah. you know, and a good map. I mean, this is the map that comes in, came in. Yeah. And, uh, that's decent. Um, yeah. I, oh, okay. sorry. No, go for it. I was going to say, to sum up Border Watch, I think it's a great uh, inspiration. You should read it, and then you should cherry pick it, and you should take a lot of inspiration from it. Use places, use use uh, character names and ideas and stuff, and go with it. And the basic premise of the adventure, I think, is spot on. It's the, the geographical ex execution that I think is is in my opinion flawed but and and it, you probably need to to figure out how you want to interpret it but the uh, basic premise of the adventure i i really like it it's 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 a great idea to to run uh, supply runs up there against i use and stuff that with ambushes and think i think that's a great adventure idea and and a lot of it is done right and and some things are are needs to be filled in and and figured out and you can you can easily convert this to any <laughs> modern edition so yeah Gate, a gateway oh my gosh remember that yeah name? uh necs gateways all those wonderful mm -hmm. things yeah all right so <coughs> excuse me yeah i hope we, we kind of whetted your appetite on this yeah. one a little bit so to speak so yeah one down, and then this one to go, and then we'll, we'll delve into a couple other. Yeah, this was the one I had the most opinions about. So, so now, now it's over to you. <laughs> well, this is my wheelhouse here. Now, yeah. as opposed mm -hmm. to the other map, this is a eh, map. This is the this yeah. is the area map for. for and it's a player one, so in. yeah. 
yeah, um, it, it could have been done a little bit better, but it wasn't. So, you know, that's what yeah, we're stuck with uh, for it. Um, and it's interesting because you just have hills on one side and forest on the other side right. and a lot of empty hexes in the middle, which is the Easily interesting done. bit doesn't give you any information whatsoever. But when we come down here, this is the area we're talking about. Yep. This area here. Okay. Right in there. Notice it's not far from here. Okay. So, and this already existed when this came out. So I'm like, oh, cool. This ought to be great. It's mm -hmm. right near us. It's written up. It's brand new. I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. And, and then we played it and got it. But here's some funny things. I, I can't put this up on the screen. Oh, I can't. But I found in here, and you can see the dot matrix printer. This is one of my original first. It's inside with the screen and all that I had in Uranus Adventure. I don't know why it's in here, but this is one of my first critical hit and fumble tables. Oh. And look, under critical, under fumbles, there's only, uh, I don't know, 20 to 25, you know, with multiple numbers on them, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so were, yeah. were these tables that came from RuneQuest or Merp or, or, or what was the inspiration? I think these came from um, the Dragon Magazine ones first. Ah, okay. And then we yeah. expanded on them a lot. But the problem mm -hmm. with these was the higher you rolled, the no, you knew the nastier it was. We mixed them up now. Like zero, zero, the, yeah, yeah, because I've, I've noticed that when we roll for crits, that, that whatever number you don't know if it's going to be good or bad, depending exactly. on, on, on how high or low it is. So, yeah. Yeah, exactly. But um, the that edge makes ones. cheese proof. <laughs> ex well, that's true. Yeah. Uh, 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 but, um, you know, the, uh, there's not as anywhere near. I, and I, I believe this is printed off, this was printed off of Commodore 64. Okay. That's not how old I think wow. this is. Yeah. yeah. So I don't want to get rid of this. It's the only copy I know of it that exists. Yeah. And that's a photocopy of the original. That doesn't, mm -hmm. you know, so. Yeah, you, you, you copied one up to have in the adventure. Yeah, yeah uh, definitely. Uh, and then I have screens in here for some characters. I'm looking to see if, um, um, Okay. Yes, we had bad names back then. The other bill, the crazy bill, the one who's not on anymore, the the, the no just no bill. Had a, a gnome illusionist. Are you ready for the name? Atrocious Butfuse. <laughs> well, we be all gone through our periods <laughs> of bad naming, so so mine yes. is long forgotten, thankfully. So so yeah. Now, Alan's character, Zag, the, the female uh, fighter of the Trident specialized, uh, I don't mind, girl, is was actually on this adventure. Also, Alan's uh, Swan May character, she wasn't a Swan May, then Vina, second level ranger, was on this. Just looking to see who, um, you yep. know, see who else. Corellia was on this, too. So, yep. And I can say that I had a, a, a similar printer to Mechaform, a 24-pin uh, Star <laughs> Micronics printer. Yeah, I have that too. Oh, <laughs> uh, we're going. Uh, this is Patriots of Yulik. All right. So I think I got this. Put this up here. Hold on. So by Anthony Pryor. Four or yep. six characters, levels one to three again. A Tandy, a, uh, a Tandy or a Trash 80. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Those were the days. The, right? This was the period, I think, when you look at these uh, these kind of uh, illustrations, you can rec a lot of these were, I think, modeled by people in and around the TSR offices and stuff, if yeah. I remember correctly. I've heard when, when we listened to the artists and, and recalled who, who who was sitting modeled for it, or they took a picture and, and used it. And some of them were probably famous people, because some of them have a striking resemblance to some movie stars or, or something like that, too. So. Absolutely. And the artworks yeah. by John and Laura Lakey, who I don't know. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, but and I've seen this used in other locations too. Oh well. yeah, they they, they were they were skimping of... on art too. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we should not. We we had one evening when we looked at old spellfire cards and stuff, and we were we like, were oh. discussing where they were, were discussing whether they were true real or not, and they they were actually were in, and that was the same era when they they were starting to run low on cash, so things get skimpy. Had to look flashy for, on a on a shoestring budget. So yeah. Yeah, but see, Alex, that was that was uh, that was cutting edge for its time, and you know I have mm -hmm. the box right there in that shelf. Oh, by the way, see all those tubes lying there? 
I separated Larry Elmore posters already, so yeah, they're awesome. ready to go for yep. the fundraiser. But I got Crescent yep. Hawks Revenge. All, uh, um, I think it's a uh, it's a DOS version. I don't think it's Windows version. Yep, over there on the, yep. on the shelf. Commodore Amigas was way ahead of its yep. time. Yeah, and since I criticized Border Watch for screwing up the logo, this one the logos are are fine. They, yes, they they look misspelled. right, so to speak. Exactly, they're not blurry good. or anything, so the print is good there. So yeah. You have to do give credit where it's due. Yep. Darkness has descended upon the world of Greyhawk. So even in yep. the relatively peaceful lands of Yulik, war and chaos threaten the humanoid tribes of the Parmarge. Here's Teresh Mack. And it's talking about, you know, the setup here. This is a, for the most part, a 50-50 regular adventure battle system. Uh -huh. Okay. So, yeah. This, yeah, this one's got a, a little bit of the battle system here. Yeah. It sh shares the same, uh, exactly the same layout and and style of of adventure as the Howl from the North. Those uh, the five shell will be one and stuff. They adventures probably came out roughly the same time because they use exactly the same layout with the same graphics and stuff around it. So so they are seems to be from the same era. Yes, you should not throw out anything there like that, Moose. I have my Darklands, and my yeah. Infocom. Darklands game was it Infocom? No, it was Microsoft. Uh, um, what's the one that I had uh, owned Civilization back then? Microprose. I have that right on the shelf over there. Wait, here, here, stop. One second. Yeah, when it comes to battle system, I have the rules, but I've never really used. I think we ran some experimental sessions, just test test skirmishes. I think we never got past the the, the testing. We just tested. So. Okay. Yeah, I just asked, answer Mr. Cyclewood, but running battle system. I think we ran a few skirmishes, but we never ran anything for oh. real. Yeah. So there, there's, there's Crescent Hawks Inception, Infocom. Um, yeah. Which one was this? Uh, five, it has five and a quarter and three and a half inch discs in it. Ooh. Crescent Hawks Revenge. Oh, wow. Okay. By the way, the, well, uh, the, uh, the, Battle the, Tech the, seems to be a perfect one for, for to make into a, a, a video. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a you you driving a mech that that seems like perfect. Well, this ooh, is a perfect condition. This one, yeah. yeah. Wow. This was an awesome game, but it never ran because you just didn't have the gra enough graphics for this. Oh, it says so why it, was it requires two time. megabytes of RAM, but it wasn't. It was like four. Uh, uh, and that yeah, almost impossible to it get. Was I guess very yeah. tough. Yeah. Plus, if you didn't have a sound blaster at that time, and a lot of people oh, didn't, yeah. and they were so expensive, you yeah. couldn't hear sh shit. Oh, or you I, can I, still I, get it on on uh, gog.com or games on yeah Facebook. yeah uh, good old games right yeah, yeah mm -hmm. absolutely so oh, that's this was cool. a neat one because this was this yeah. was like in the medieval European aspect mm -hmm. of witchcraft uh, people yeah. you know and stuff so uh, this was a neat neat one this was way yeah. ahead of its time but unfortunately it barely ran so yeah um, and but then it, lastly those times it was. A lot of technical difficulties because computers evolved so fast that it was hard to fall. Yeah, Ooh, the look at I that. The yeah. Oh, SSI. yeah, the SSI uh, yeah. games. I played them a little bit on my Amiga and, and early PCs. Right yeah. I never I never got really deep into them, but I remember cool. them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, a lot of them are on Steam or good old games. You get them on either, um, yeah. either ones, but just noting. And I think they are emulators. If you can't run them, yeah. if they're not modern version, there are DOS emulators and stuff where you can set the performance and, and you can run them virtually or emulate it. Yeah. Did anyone ever play the original Neverwinter Nights, the gold box version Neverwinter Nights? I'm not talking about the third edition one. I'm talking about the one that was, uh, that was an MMO. Did anyone out there run it? Because it was hex editable. Right. I think we ran it a little bit, but then I was so busy with work and stuff that we didn't do it. So, so we didn't continue with it. But it was, yeah, it, yeah, it was it technically it was really ahead of its time because you can run it, you you can make your own adventures in it. Bard's Tale stuff. was fantastic, but yeah. you know, yeah, Bard's Tale was the, all three mm -hmm. of them. I mean, I, yeah. the Thief of Fate, eh, the first one, the first two were fantastic. But the yeah. Never Never Winter when we were down in the yeah. drows and stuff. That was for its time. It was. Fantastic, and you, it was multiplayer too. That was the cool thing. You can run with others. I remember we multiplayed those, and, and that was fantastic. So what we'll do this is this: we'll do one, 
and we'll do all the R T uh, the RPGs that were yeah. out there. Mm -hmm. Dark, even the Dark Sun one. We'll talk about all. Yeah, of them. we we can. Yeah, we can talk no about problem. old video versions, yes. game versions. I'll stuff. go off yeah, of Baldur's Gate fun. two all day, and you'll see how much I ripped off from it. So mm -hmm. I guarantee we'll do yep. Gavin on that in the near future. Yeah, that that's a good idea. All yeah. the Diablo awesome. stuff and whatever. Yeah, so yeah, it'd be really mm -hmm. cool. We'll do that in the very near future. I promise. Yeah. All right. So the um. So First what's the off, premise I, for this? Yeah. The first, well, the premise for this is, uh, you know, um, <laughs> you know, in my campaign, the Prince of Yulik is a bit of a dick, right? So okay. here, characters are summoned before the Prince of Yulik and given grave news. Now, first of all, first level characters being summoned in front of the prince, that's, a, that's yeah. far-fetched, right? Mm -hmm. uh, right off the bat. The Promarch Horde is on the march. Now, how they know it's coming through the source, I don't know, because the source is so, you know... But it, it, they know. And the future of the principality hangs in the balance to first level yeah. characters. The prince goes <laughs> on to say well, that. Well, they have to be big. Yep. <laughs> this might the invasion. Uh, best troops from Northern Province of Princefield have yeah. not arrived. Typical in my game, too. The prince's troops mm -hmm. never arrive on time. So there you go. Oh, that, yeah. That's mm -hmm. the same. Um, <laughs> yes. So uh, Graf Twembley, the halfling leader of Princefield. Um, you know, they're unaware of it. Well, of course, they're halflings. They don't care. So, uh, yeah, so that that's on. And so you need to go there and, and rouse the troops, basically. Mm -hmm. So You're first level. You have right, to magic. Another one, great one, Casey. <laughs> yes. Save it for that show. Oh, Casey, I may have you, yep. you, know, have mm -hmm. you on in that. Yeah, but we're, we're going to do that. I guarantee you we're going to do that very soon. I may do it. And, and if I don't feel like prepping, for, for we may even do it Sunday, okay? Just know, because I, I, I don't need to prep for it because it's all. We can just. Yeah, yeah we can just roll with yeah. it and have a fun night. Get if some I'm that burnt out. And yeah. Stuff. Yep. So, so look for that possibly on Sunday. If I don't have, I'm trying to put together a round table with P DMs I haven't had on before, um, but so far I, I'm yeah. over. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I'm going to try and, and get the, the my favorite version of Neverwinter run. I'm, I'm going to install like a Windows 95 uh, oh, virtual cool. computer and, and see if I can boost it up or, or something or to, to XP or whatever it was run back then. Yeah. My, my, yeah, early 90s. Yeah, uh, uh, very early 90s. Uh, the first color ones came out. Because uh, well, well, Wasteland was the 80s. Wasteland was the best one of uh -oh. all time. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm sorry. I'm bouncing. All right. You'll, eat, you'll get 500 gold for expenses from the prince. Uh, if you ride from dawn to dusk, stopping only to sleep, you will reach Princeville in three days. All right. So basically, you are Paul Revere. What else can I say in this one? Yeah, All right, so yeah. the, your group first. But, but I love characters. that illustration; is really yes. cool. That that is a great illustration. Is that, and that Ken just Frank? like from the ashes? The same yeah. same artist, mm -hmm. whoever. Yeah, it was. I think I, it's Ken Frank. I think okay. it's Ken Frank. Yeah, I think so, but I might be wrong. But hang on a second, I can I can look while you continue. Uh, yeah, it's Ken Frank interior art. Yep, mm -hmm. he did from from the ashes and and a lot of that era. Yeah. So, um, and then you're going to have, and here comes your random encounters, your night encounters. This, this adventure, the planned encounters. So you have, so <laughs> it's all over the place. There are some, you can have as many random encounters as you want, but you have some planned encounters um, as you're traveling along. So it's kind of force fed a little bit here, but that's all right. A small yeah. group of Dora and warriors clad in chain mail armed with hammers. So you jump in and you're going to help them against orcs, goblins, and wolves. So be it. Carl Stonecutter of Iron Gate. Why he is all the way out here and Yulik is another thing as well. Um, so our high priest reasons message Tarash Mac has defeated the border garrisons and now on a march toward Haven Hill. Once again, we throw this map back and, uh, and uh, I have to always do this. Yeah. Haven Hill's way out here. Oh yeah, and this that's a lot of land that uh, they're supposed but, to take over. Yeah. yeah, but that is the the you the usual premise because they didn't have any. They needed to use the names that were already established, and and those names were usually <laughs> they, they looked like a neat little distance from on the Darlene map. But once you zoom in, they're hundreds of miles away, and 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 that's the they, they used the the wrong. They, they the, the, right. the initial countries are way too big for the story, so to speak. So that's Absolutely. why you get all this, this Absolutely. stuff. Absolutely. Yeah, this I, should play out in an area over 20 miles or something, or 10 miles maybe, not 300 miles. Exactly, way yeah. too big. And note, mm -hmm. this is my map. 
there, yeah, there is. Uh, these are all good guy towers all along. Uh, oh yeah, it, it's. It, yeah, I'm, I'm going to change it a lot campaign. too in my campaign because it, it was the mess that that was left it's, over was after, a, after a yeah, the, the wars and all that. Absolutely. So, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah say it keeps that keeps running all along. Yeah, it just yeah, it was kind of mess. yeah, it needs to be cleaned right, up. So yeah. back up to the Prince Field here now. A good thing about this trek, you have maps now that someone did from the from from mm -hmm. the community who has willingly said we can share them anytime. And that, oh, that's good. That yep. is Vincent Metellier, and I've showed these mm -hmm. a couple times. What year did the first D&D computer game come out? Uh, Wizardry was on the Apple II. 83 mid, mid or 84. 80s. Yeah, mid 80s. I, 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 guess. I, I yeah. think, no, it was before that because I, I was a junior in high school. Okay, yeah. Tim's dad introduced me to it. I think it's 83 it came out, it, uh, the original Wizardry. Yeah, I never yeah. saw them in Sweden. I think the first one we had was 85, 86. Yeah, we had I think them it was in, in the game. It was, store it was a was monochrome before. green. Uh, yeah. So here. Oh, so wow. Here is. Here's, oh yes! Right. Mm -hmm. So we have the maps of the towns, which is cool. Here's yep. Brenfrus. Okay. Here is Oakenburg. Great maps. Yeah. Yep. Oh no, we're good. I was when I was in high school. I was playing with. Hang on a second. We have heraldry on that one. Oh, okay. Let me go back. You have to ask uh, oh. who, who made them. Yeah. Oh, and if, Vincent, if we can... Vincent had to make it, made it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so his, then we have to ask him if if I can make a version, and then we can yeah, Vincent Metellier. And... Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's got the it's got the same thing that we have in Altamira too. We have that uh, bar right there, the yeah. defensive mm -hmm. bar. Yep. yep. Cool. That then we have a heraldry. So we have to ask him and 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 I have to ask him and see if we, I can uh, make it and put it on the on the on my map on the on the big map. Yeah, that will be cool. These are from Vincent Metellier, and he's on a lot yeah. of the sites like Sages of Greyhawk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So um, these three maps, and they're from these. Are, they're for this adventure. See, Rears March, Brenfrus, Oakenburg, all three of them are yeah. right here, and he made all these. So and this one's really yeah. nice. This is and the nicest. He, yeah. One. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, look, and he alerted me to some of the, the yeah. Ooh, awesome. Yeah, I forgot about that. So so let yeah. me see if there's one on the first one. Yeah. So I have to look um This is a smaller town, so maybe not. No, the, no, I don't, I don't see so. one on this one. No. Okay, yeah. But okay. that is that is awesome if we can we can use that. That will be so cool. Well, yeah, yeah, I imagine I imagine he'd be completely yeah. fine. Mm -hmm. uh, so those exist. If um you can always uh, if you can't find him I prefer you ask him you know um and if he if he says hey it's okay for Jay to give him out that's fine but um they exist and if you run this game you can ha you know uh, it, it's perfect to utilize them and then you can expand on it and that's another thing I I, I want to say is you know this is a, a way uh, if you're playing in this area you can expand in this area um you know um another thing uh. Just a year ago, this border was further down here, if I recall, right? And you expanded it. It was more down this way. Yeah. Right, Anna? You expanded this border out Oh, more. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that smart. was after he, he uh, reached out to me. So, yeah. Uh, I don't have these in color. Vincent he did, sent, right? He sent, yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. He sent me them in, in black and white. But, yeah, so, so I'll, I'll right. ask him because he sent me emails and stuff with them in black and white with the point of interest going with them. So, so yeah. Good. Very good. Yep. So, so I'll ask him for for the color ones and 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 Metellier, M A T T E L I E R. I think he's yeah, French. It's, yeah, French or Canadian. Yeah, yeah, yeah French. Yeah. yeah, he's a good guy. Um, so, oh yeah, um, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and this is, uh, and here's Twembley Manor. So, the adventure itself is basically your Paul Revere and the Raiders. You don't remember that band. Um, this and like I said, here's the map of the area, which is terrible, right? It's a bad map, but it just shows you some uh, points. Yeah, of for its time, hey, it's usable, All right? And the points of interest on it, and then there are encounters as you go, you go encounter. I don't like you go rest encounter, you go rest encounter. I, I, I don't like that kind of rinse and repeat. I like to wear down my players, as you all know. Encounter four clerks of Alana, you know, all right. And then here comes the Prinsfield chapter. Here's a village of Brenfless. 
the village of Oakenburg. And look, it's just boom, boom, boom. You're going through these. There's not a lot mm-hmm. here. It's just telling you about the points of interest. Basically, yeah. it's a shell, and you got a, an area. It's almost a setting mm-hmm. area that you got to really develop for this. Yep. That's why a lot of people go, this really isn't an adventure. Right? It's really not as much, and that's why it doesn't get high ratings as an adventure. But to utilize in a campaign setting, it may mm-hmm. be cool for you. Yeah. And and then here's the graphs, uh, um, uh, graph uh, Twemley Manor, which is on the map as well. Um, mm-hmm. So uh, and he is uh, 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 he is a baddie, and he's a halfling too, which I love. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh yeah. And again, Ken Frank illustrations are great. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Really got some level of detail of the characters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So surprise assault. You get the idea. Here's the cha- uh, chapel of St. Cuthbert is, is um, for the location. Um, just a lot of detail on the uh, on, uh, on uh, the, the the buildings and all. Not much substance of what what the what's going. You know, what I mean, there's not much detail there. It's just uh, it, you got to really run this. Now, this is the building that Jeremy Gamescape 3D asked about two years ago, Jay, uh, should I make this up as a 3D print? I have this adventure. Should I make this up? And I was like, I said to him, it would be cool to have, but I don't know how many people, you probably get a use of 1% of the community currently because I'd love to have the Manor House, but mm-hmm. I'm not going to use it yeah. for here. I'm going to use it for somewhere else. Oh, it, yeah, so. but a Manor House like that, I think is really cool that any lord, a lot of lords can live in and stuff. That will be because it's it's a recurring theme in a lot of adventures. You go to the lord, ask permission, or you hold there to 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 answer for your 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 murder hoboing or whatever it is. So, or you invited for for. A f- feast or, or diplomatic gathering or, or something so yeah oh you spelled it better thank you i spelled it wrong yeah i think he's on deviantart too these maps may be right on deviantart and you can pull them right off of there oh okay, okay. yeah oh, yeah cool uh, yeah yep. uh, thank you for rick Sauls for spelling it better i spelled it i i, thank you. I butchered yep. it mm-hmm. i butchered it so uh but it's it's good when you can share you can show something the community has done to enhance something existing. And that's what I, one of the reasons why I wanted to have this to say, don't waste anything, you know, and here's a prisoner here. Um, Arnulf Royal Herald of Ulick. So. Orc shamans, o- ogres even in this. And here comes chapter five, the defense of Prinsfield. And this is where, we get into battle system. If you want to run this normally, you can, but it is a battle system scenario. And that, that I love this picture, though. This is an awesome picture. Just lines, uh, really tight lines of fighting there. But uh, and here you go. There's all the troops in the battle system, and uh, and that is uh, not that many, um, not that many troops actually. It's a small battle system compared to some of the other ones. But Pomar's player wins if he eliminates at least half of the Ulic force or exits half his troops off the south edge of the map board, which means they've advanced. Yep. And that is, there's Graf's Manor. That's it. Now, let's take this. Let's take that and, whoops, and expand in the area. With a little surprise. If you can find this, like the A team, if you can find them, you can hire them. Uh, sorry, I'm really old. I shouldn't have. That's a real old reference. Out of this is another two E adventure right there that I've run. I ran live stream, not far. And there, so we have this whole area of Princefield. Here are the ruins of Atreka from the Gore novels, mm-hmm. right? Yep, yep. Mm-hmm. And then here's the hidden temple of the Rithnal placed in my campaign uh, on the map. And there are some of the Thunderstrike is a published area, and these are mine. But there's a hidden temple of Rithnal, and here's the a, a bonus uh, thing that uh, is published uh, that you can run. In the world of Greyhawk setting, and that's where it is located, and it's all second edition. There's a lot of specialized fighters in here. Uh, it's levels two to five, so you can make this fit right in with whatever you're doing in that area as well. Another, uh, so yeah, Ken Frank is really good, absolutely. 
Vortex Magazine. There's only nine of them. This is Vortex 8. It is... It took me three years to, to get this. I have a copy. Yep. It took me a long, long time to get that. So... No, Thunderstrike is not an order of Ulick Town. Thunderstrike is a noted location. That is that is a noted location. Order of Ulick Outpost One, the White Tower, Winchester's Bulwark, Warmonger's Tower, Outpost Two, Wales Castle are all Order of Ulick locations, running all the way up. And then also you know, Glipdell is my campaign, uh, and Altamira, of course, and then every, a lot up here. So yeah, but. Hidden Temple of the Rithnal is a, a mul it almost gives me a, a um, not on the, the super level of Temple of Elemental Evil, but it has the same feel to it, where you're going to have to foray in and out of this with high level, uh, as you go up in level. So, I found one issue of Vortex in a bargain bin at some point, nice. it's the only one I've ever seen. Cool. What was from the Gord novels? You, do you remember when they are in the, uh, the Sus, and they find, and they're like, uh, they're stepping on top of it, and they go, oh, there's ruins here? They really don't go into much detail on them, correct, Anna? They just, they don't do anything in the ruins. Not much. They, they go in and they, oh, they find one of the artifacts. I remember they the they do? One. Okay. Yeah, and then I think when they that's come that. back, that's when Rothgor, oh, the, that's my name, when the dragon comes and chases them, and they're in that, that is on the, the cover of the second book. That's when they're, they're, they're coming, Artifact of Evil. Thank you. Yeah. So the second book, it's when they flee with the artifact from there and the dragon comes up to hunt them. I think that's, but it's, someone might correct me, but I think that's the, the, the idea. So they, they're only there for a chapter or something, but there's some, some nasty stuff down there and, 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 and stuff. So, yeah, I, yeah. I forget the reference for Thunderstrike. I think it's on the map, if I recall. From the ashes, it's on. It, it, it's on. The, um, it's not on the original Greyhawk Darlene map, but I think for some reason I'm thinking the Slavers reference that goes that far out. It's on. It's on one of those second edition references. Uh, so I just added it. It was not there when I did all the all the art campaigning in the '80s. See, that's the problem. When we're campaigning so old, shit pops up on you. <laughs> Someone else does. And it's it, it comes up. So hey, socket. Good to see you. Yeah, but it's a cool thing. So this area is neat, and there you go. And so the Hidden Temple of the Rithnal um, is uh, is a is a foray adventure, just like um, the wonderful Temple of Immortal Evil. Lots of bugbears, gnolls, uh, and super powerful dual class characters in here. It, it, it's kind of nasty. Um, this is the one that I we still go back to this day. Because Anna, you'll you'll love this. We still we still say it's the biggest alignment slip we've had in a long time. And the lower <laughs> level, they're all the the kids of all these evil humans are in here, and mm -hmm. they go into this room and they're doing a ring around the rosy, saying you're all going to die. You're all, you know blah blah blah. <laughs> and Alan's elf goes crazy and goes in and slaughters them all. Uh oh, oh dear. Yes, yep. and I'm like, well, oh, but that... that's that's occasionally you should have stuff like that in your uh, well, it happens. Career. So, yeah. but, mm -hmm. but it's like yeah. uh, we 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 all deem it's like that... a good horror movie. You, you <laughs> it occasionally was, it was... should go go very wrong. Exactly. Yeah. So it was it it was really. Um, let me see if I can find the room right here. Uh... I know it's it, it was as long as everybody level. around the table are are, uh, Everyone was are okay with it, so to speak. So well, if you play with your good friends, then then you that you played with for years and years and years, yeah, and that's usually not a big problem. No, I, but it just was a, it was a shocking yeah. moment because like it was it's like well they can't be redeemed. I was like well they're kids, yeah. yeah well they're not kids anymore. So, mm -hmm. but um, if you can find this, uh, it, it it's the typeset's bad in it. So you got to really, you need a high, you need a highlighter. Don't highlight if you find the magazine, photocopy it or whatever, but you okay, need a highlighter yeah. to find everything mm -hmm. in here. And that's the way a lot of adventures are, uh, yeah. you know, uh, but um, I loved running it. I live streamed it. It is over a hundred adventures ago. This Seldarine crystal, uh, one of Tom's characters has this item, which is a really neat item. It's like a, a, a semi artifact that's in here that you get. And then, uh, you know, here's, the, see, look, there are the, uh, there are the maps for it. Yep. 
So this adventure was published in Vortex uh, number um, eight. I want to say 92 or is it 96? Between 92 and 96. Uh, in that era, it was, oh, no, 93, it says. 93 right here is the map, mm -hmm. so I'm assuming it was the same. Yeah. yeah. So 1993, this was published. But it's the only Greyhawk one that was ever done in all nine Vortex magazines. So, And this is, the, a little little sidebar, this adventure is what caught Reaper's eye, um, the, uh, the art director, it was a big Greyhawk guy, and I was I, I showed I was doing this Hidden Temple of Rithnal, and he said, he said, where's that from? And I started talking with him, and I said, look, I've been trying to reach out to you guys for a couple months now. He's like, oh, glad we made the connection. So I actually got the Reaper sponsorship from running this, which is really a weird thing. So, yep. Yeah, uh, you should, absolutely. But like I said, the only one with Greyhawk content is number eight out of nine of them. But there's all other cool stuff if you can find it, so but they're hard to find. But a bonus thing to let you know in that area, um, something else you can uh, you can yep. run uh, besides running running uh, uh, Patriots of you looking first level saviors of the entire land. So, um, you know, maybe it should be scaled down a little bit. You know, that that's a big, that's a big ask for a first, the first, second, third level adventure. So, um, but then again, not everything is not everything is 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 uh, going to win a Pulitzer Prize, right, Anna? <laughs> oh, that's especially yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that and and also we have to realize these were written a few years before TSR went, yes. published a few years before they went bust. So so they 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 were short on on money and and there was probably a lot of turnaround and staff and stuff. So so we heard all the horror stories from the the the, the late TSR. So yeah. All right. So, something really good, and I go mm -hmm. back to this, and I'll run stuff out of this here and there, live streamed even. Treasures of Greyhawk is a wonderful, wonderful. Um, I don't know how this came together, and I wish who's the pub who who was the overseer on this editing? John Pickens. I would love to know how this came together. My guess is that they had a lot of it laying around, and then they mashed it together and released yeah. it as as a big thing because they needed to release something, and it was cheap. Probably they already paid for it and it was sitting around. I'm wondering now if Tom Prusa is the guy who owns Prusa Printers, the Czech company. I'm really wondering if that's him, same person. Diesel did the cartography in here, which is good. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, uh, a lot of these people, I don't even know who they are. Uh, do not know them. So, cool. I know Dan's just kind of what it was like at TSR. Yeah, uh, I can imagine. It is a great cover. So, this is a series of short adventures that you can plop into your campaign. Mm -hmm. All right. And it's all leveled up. It's all set up by level. Um, and I've told this story a, a, a dozen times, but I'm going to tell it a dozen and one. I was responsible for saying, hey, Anna, you're missing something on your map. Yeah. Right mm -hmm. here. So, and that is, that is this Castle Martin with and Anna made the Heraldry Olivet and Karine's Tomb, which is a really great adventure in here. And that is up in, in, up here in the, um, the hills, the Karen yep. Hills. So if we go back. Yeah. So, here, so yeah, the, the Heraldry design is from here, but the colors are, are my yours. choice. Yep. So that's because it's the, only black and white. That's a sixth level adventure. Uh, I, so out of this, I've run, I've run the Shadow Karine, the Helm of Selnor, and I just ran that a little while ago, um, live stream, uh, Crossing into Steel live stream. Not this. Uh, that's in the that's in the Shieldlands. I ran that one, um, uh, and and that is it right now. Uh, as far as the, I've only run three of them. Um, hey, hey, Dale. So if we go to, if we, if we come up here and it says how to use this book, uh, all the, these are normally set in the world of Greyhawk. I mean, you could use these anywhere, but uh, they all have a little bit of a Greyhawk flavor to them, but they're not long at all. So if you, if you look at, if you look at like this one, a little knowledge fourth level, uh, it's probably like four or five pages. Uh, and there you go. Well, it looks like a gyna sphinx. So that's it. Wow. Not counting the picture. One, two, three pages. <laughs> Three page adventure. Mm -hmm. So, yep. 
Here's Blade Star, fourth level. This is in the city ground. The PCs are asked by, I may have run this one, the city guard to investigate the death of a night watchman, who I, I use the night watch a ton. All right. The death occurred near the burned out area of the Great Burn in the Thieves Quarter. I think I ran this one. I just forgot. So there you go. Another one. There's another. Oh, is that uh, Ken Frank again? Yep. Yeah, that error. Yep. All right. Another adventure. And a lot of these have, when they say they're treasures, there's usually a magic item, a special magic item attached to them. In this instance, it's Blade Star, an intelligent dagger plus two. All right. It is a dagger of slaying lawful creatures. Oh, that's that's cool for those Fultus people and those St. Cuthbert people. That's nice. And Heronius people. Ugh. That's nasty. <laughs> oh, gaslighted. That's funny. Arthur, I'm sorry. My South Jersey babbling. All right, this is according. This is Mac's favorite one, the Neoji Nest. Oh, oh. That, of course, a spell jammer. That's why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the mm. Neoji. Yeah. Yep. That's funny. This is in the city of Greyhawk as well. Another good one. The Neoji, though, aren't they Neoji slave traders? Or am I, am I remembering this wrong? I don't What's, know. <laughs> People I know we don't want to go, go there. Pan but... pa panic in, in, in Wizards of the Coast again because there, there was some... I forgot what the, what the latest debacle was about this, but yeah. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. So that's in the OG nest. And look, there's... Yeah, they're a they're definitely aliens, but I think they they take people from Earth. I'm almost positive. And there's a there's a star fair. So there you go. You got a spell jamming ship in this one. Yep. All right, this is the one. This is the shot of Karin. Yeah. Use Ankeds instead. That's funny. Oh, you were kidding about it, Mac? Because I thought you'd like the spell jamming ship in there. <laughs> oh, okay. Karen Hills perfectly, and here's the map, and there's the there's the logo, and there's the a whole map right there. There's mm -hmm. Martine, and it's all right there, yep. and then it got added uh, about two and a half, and, two and a half, yeah. three years ago, and added. Yeah, something like that, and and also I love it because it's an area that is un unused yep. at the map earlier on. So I love yep. that that is something there. So yep. something that got added in, which is perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was a map for that. Fill one. up an empty spot. The Shroud of Karin is the one, and I, I think I said this one just recently. Uh, it's it's laced in, with emeralds. It is easily worth one hundred thousand gold pieces. So have them do it as, for, on behalf of someone. Uh, yeah, or you're gonna have some trouble there. But it's a cool it's a cool short adventure. I expanded it a little bit. It's a tomb raiding thing. You got you know here's your you got a little puzzle. So that was a neat one. Uh, there's a chapel of Ralishaz in here, so that uh, that gives a little bit of a fun part for Eric Mona. Yeah, so. They are slavers who pretend to trade. Is that true? Is that true, Mac? They trade furniture. Apparently, yeah. Oh, okay. All right. You know more than me on that. That's I, th I thought they were. Oh, yeah. That's beyond me. Yeah. I just ran this Helm of Selnor. I called it Vestra in the Helm of Selnor. I had her as, um, she is, if anyone remembers the story, I connected it in. Walt's got a character who's the son of the king uh, uh, of uh, the Frost Barbarians, right? And she is a, uh, she is, uh, whether she was a half-sister or lied about that or whatever, she came and uh, with, with this helm and uh, came all the way down and was creating like a little army of individuals in the Lort Mill Mountains outside the outside the county Yulik on the on the western side and the, I ran this one I live streamed it and it went really well and this was uh, I don't know I think about a my guess is a year and a half ago time is time just melds in together but it fit perfectly in what we did so I ran this one um like I said they're all on YouTube too so you just look up Vestra and you could find that I think it was two sessions it could have been three I can't remember Bigby's Modest Home. Okay. Now, th there's another one for Adelukes that's a dungeon adventure because Adeluk gets killed permanently and you can buy his house. And so we actually have uh, Alan's gnome got it. His illusionist thief uh, actually got uh, Adeluk's home uh, in, 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 uh, in Greyhawk. This one's Bigby's Modest Home. 
And look, it says the recent deaths of the members of the circle eight of eight. The recent deaths, we don't know which one, the first, second, third, or fourth time, right? So, um, oh, this is after Vecna, so they all died. <laughs> In this one. Yeah, it's okay, the Ferengi. But the Ferengi, they, the Ferengi weren't slave traders, though, so, yeah. So, another Greyhawk one. Take it as you want in this one. I think right. all of them are set around Greyhawk, aren't they? Uh, well, the Hall of Solner I had was uh, was I had in Lord Mills. I don't think that. Oh, okay. That's where that one was. But Lord Mills, uh, yeah. Shieldlands. There's one in Shieldlands, which. Oh, have, okay. Uh, well, we then you go. Yeah, yep, there you right. go. Um, yep. oh, there's one in Ernst, if I recall. So there. Terror pretty, in the Tropics. There. So no, this one. Oh, uh, sea Princes. Oh, there you see that some of them are really yeah, far the away. Yeah, Sea Princes yep. need a group of adventurers to find out what happened. So Jetsam Island. And this one takes place. And then going up a level, this one's ninth. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we see they have exactly the same layout idea. That they have yeah. just changed some of the colors. So they, they really try to, to reuse as much of the graphics and uh, stuff so they could save. Thanks, save Alex. Is that the first one? What number What number was it? 957. Okay. It wasn't that long ago. What's the date on this? Seven months ago. All right. It, okay. Wow. It was only seven months ago? Wow. Oh, my gosh. It's like I yesterday. It was, yeah. It's like, oh, my. We, we start 988 this. Hey, goblets. Wow. No. Okay. I thought it was earlier than that. Nice. It wasn't that long ago. Okay. Thank you very much for thinking that. Uh, there's a one. You fight Wan T in this one. Which is, and this one's, the, I think this one's the longest one. Terror in the Tropics. On the town is... Where the heck is this one? Well, where it was set in the Sea Princess somewhere. Is Jetsam that, Island. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you go to Jetsam Island. You, fight, you want yep. tea in that one. Yep. Oh, wait a minute. This one is... Uh, um, if the previous adventure was not played... So this... Oh, this one is... This is a sequel. On the town's a oh. sequel to the previous one. Yeah. And there's two of them that are like that. They're sequels. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. This is a sequel. It looks like that guy looks like a vampire. Is that a vampire? Or he just it's just a bad picture he looks like. Doesn't he? Maybe, maybe he's just a priest. Yeah. Yep. But at least I got Ken Frank to do interior art. So yes. That's good. Yeah. All right. Next. We're doing good. We're doing good. It's a Monday. Normally, with, uh, with football, there's no way. Mm -hmm. The Eagles game and all, there's, there's no, there's no way. So uh, <laughs> yeah, I was going to have it, to it today. Like that. Yeah. Yes, but look, we have like we almost have 90 people on. So thank you for coming on a Monday night. It's awesome. Yeah, mm -hmm. really appreciate it. All right, so crossing into steel. This I ran and recently. Um, I could look up what number it was, but not necessary. What I did was the following. It, it, it doesn't say specifically where it is in the shield lands. So what I did was way out here past Ringland, I have uh, Marco's character, David Gradivus, has ruined Gradivus' estate. And I said off the Gradivus' estate was this resting place. This is a two-parter. I haven't run the second part yet. This is a uh, – it's one of those where I go, you know, long-term campaign. We go back to it. Mm -hmm. So basically there is Tithus um, – takes you on and here's a uh ask you to go on this mission he, she's taking care of a santher she's a, a dual class cleric paladin dual class human dying of age and you are to, to take her to her you don't know where you're what you're doing in an adventure i'm giving it away here you know but uh, she's going to uh pass and uh to meet up um and uh, it almost has this feel this has this Everyone remember Conan the Destroyer and the wizard's thing in the middle, and you had to figure out how to get out there, and it was by itself reclusive. It was kind of the same thing in here, but uh, with Ilkhuf's dwelling, and Ilkhuf was like an ex, I think an ex-lover, and then uh, um, had gone awry, and then if you can get him to like uh, repent or come you know, back to his ways, you can uh, have have it so that she can re uh, die in a rest restful peace and merge into her essence into this holy avenger, which is cool, and that and that's where Tom's character Pelinor de Golan has this this now, but 
this thing wants to destroy this face of Zenus. That's its purpose. Um, and we'll eventually do that. And uh, that is the next adventure, which I haven't run yet. And when it does that, it'll just, it'll probably destroy the weapon. So that's why we're waiting. We're waiting on that. But that, but I love it. So there's two of them that are two-parters in here. So there's some good little uh, side... Uh, um, sorry. The whole, but yeah, the whole crystalline magic castle and the fog thing. Exactly, Mystery. It was exactly... If you guys... If anyone remember me playing that one, I had the fog running up all over. Uh, you know. Uh, oh. And, uh, yeah, I, I actually... Yeah, we tried it. Yeah. yeah. That's a really cool uh, maze there. The one with circles and stuff. I really Zagig's like maze. Yeah, I like that. It's not a square one; it's a circle one. Yeah, that, that hurts yeah. my head looking at it. It really. Oh does. yeah, it's 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 it's. I think it's a great, great idea for a maze. Ethereal maze, it's called. So, and then uh, their face of Xenos is uh, is an evil artifact, and uh, it needs to be destroyed by the the sword of Ensanther, and. Uh, that's cool. Well of all heals. This one is in the great uh in Greyhawk? I think this one's in the Greyhawk as well. The Well of All Heals. I think it is. A mage of the Free City Greyhawk. Maybe the mage is of the Free City, and but it's not specifically placed. This one may not be specifically placed. Yeah, this this one you may be able to place in multiple places. Most of them are placed, but this one I don't think is. All right. And then the wizard isn't home. Uh, the party's heard of a magnificent jewel, the Eye of the Near Deev. There you go. This is uh, so Ramiel's Highway may be found on the banks of the Near Deev. You have that out. We we showed that just recently, didn't we? Ramiel's hideaway is on the banks of the Nerdiv down here. That I don't remember, but yeah. I think I think it was on the map. Okay, yeah. I think. I hope I hope so. Yeah. Ramiel disappeared years ago. The eye, uh, uh, the party's some indication either through a map or a book of where Ramiel's hideaway may be found on the banks of the Nerdiv. I don't think there's a map showing where it is. Now it's not that large, but oh, okay. But yeah, yeah it's it's levels. Ramel's six. dwelling, uh, defeating the scarecrow. Sitting room, underwater tunnel. Okay. Maybe. Ooh, maybe there's an ad here coming. Yeah. Hide out for Ramel the reader. My rooms. It's probably not big enough to believe. Well, maybe we can yeah, find I out mean, something. I make it into some little thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of places. Yeah. So plenty so I'll I'll take a screenshot of this. Yeah. I think remote would be good on that one too. Yeah. I would look at the details on the adventure, but um, I'm looking to see if there's any deep. Well, it says the party must travel to the southern shore of the Near Deep, only a few days from the city of Greyhawk, so it's not that far out. It can't uh, if it's only a few days. Yeah. It's behind a boulder. <laughs> okay. All for a hat. Yep. The Temple of St. Cuthbert is looking for a powerful party to recover a lost relic. I was thinking of running this very soon. This one. I was thinking of running this. So. Yeah. I mage don't think point? This is no, mage, not Mage no, Point. No. Exactly. It's not Mage no, Point. That's not next mage to point. Tensor's uh, yeah, no. castle. Yeah. I was thinking of running this. So that's a possibility. Um, I think it's in, or this one's the one in Ernst. All for a hat. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm almost positive this one's an Ernst. Yes, a priest. The temple is searching for the great relic of the faith, the original chapeau worn by Hercules, a priest who originally spread the word of Saint Cuthbert to the Duchy of Ernst. It lies on an altar in the ruins of a temple where Hercules was buried. So yeah, I assumed that meant Duchy of Ernst for this one. So 
zoom it till the large beholder. Yes. Wow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, that's exactly why. And a bunch, yeah. a ton of hook cars in here too. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, ropers. Yeah. yeah, this is not an easy. Yeah. Well, it's uh, average party level 11. Yeah, so, yeah I like it. Yes, yeah, so yeah. I'm thinking I'm going to run this one. I may move it out of Ernst, though. Sorry there, Valmoku, and anyone else who's an Ernstite. A sword for a hero. This is the, this, you have this dragon on the map. This is Sofazektetkis. Do I have it? Yes, on the map? yeah, you have okay. an okay, good. lower thank, crystal thank miss. You. I know for yep. a, a positive. And it's okay, way good. out there. Oh, lower crystal mists. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. I think it's out here. No, we're like, where is it? I know. Uh, there's some dragon lairs here and there in the. I thought it was way down. It was way out of the way when I when I, when I saw it. Now I need to. There's the eye of Jeremy. I know I saw it. Yeah. Oh, there's some. Uh... Hold of Grumnur. It just just rolls way up. Here it is. Near the sea and crystal mists. Oh, okay. There it is. There we go. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Hey Tim. There's Sophisticates. Hello. Yep. Yep. So uh, and this one you are going to and this one's level eighteenth. <laughs> right? Uh and oh, wow. the dragon layer is detailed out. Yes. Fire, yeah, I would, and there's giants here too. I would um, make it. Uh, uh, that's a great. That's a flame. That looks like flame almost from dungeon number one. Yeah. yeah. They sketched, used that as a base. But yeah. in that sense, I love this sketch. It's almost better than, than yeah. that one. Definitely. Damn, I wonder, did he do one. that? Did he do that one? I don't think he. I think no. that's a. a, a, a no, number one. Did he do dungeon number one? I'm wondering. No, I, I uh, think no. that's a Keith Parkinson. Oh, it's a Keith Parkinson. Okay. I, th right, cool. I think so. Yeah, I might be yeah. wrong. Someone might correct me in chat here that can look it up. But I guess my guess is that it it's, it was a Parkinson. Once again, the, this thing has way too few hit points. I pumped this thing way up. Well, um, it's an old school dragons. Yeah. They weren't that beefy. Yeah, but it's nasty. And here's the sword of Azar Alk. It's a really nasty oh, sword. Oh, that is a cool Azur yeah. Alk. Yeah, yep. that's a Absolutely. blast from the past. This, yep. Yeah, probably the most one of the most powerful um, items in the in in Treasures of Greyhawk. Yep. Purpose of slaying evil out other planar beings. So Githyank guy, I guess demons, devils, all of it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yep. Is this line neutral? Good. Has a special purpose. So there you go, and that's in the lair. That's a good illustration. That was once on a dragon cover, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Second edition. So. Oh I, yeah, it was from the wizard um, spell cards book uh, thing too. Yeah. As you can see, I'm not. I haven't used all the stuff, and I've only run three or four adventures in here, and there's like mm -hmm. ten or twelve, and they're all good. Yep. Uh, you're one of the few Twitch channels that puts uh, pulls out. Well, Mecca. Um, well, thank you, Mecca, and you know why that is. I couldn't do it until I got partner. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm not trying to brag, but you have, as a partner, you have the, you have the dedicated bandwidth guaranteed. And then that's why a lot of, of other affiliate channels may chunk a bit. Cause then it's the, all the remaining bandwidth gets chopped up between all of them based on v viewer turtles. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that's one of the main, you know, things in that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. But that's, yeah, I try to run. Good. Well, I was going to say, we, we, we got our internet upgraded. So we have uh, 500 megabytes down and 200 up, I think, or, or, or something. So so on nominally. So instead of 10, we hopefully have 20 up. But last time I streamed, it was no hiccups. I didn't have Good. a single dropped frame. So That's that was, awesome. Yeah, so, so it, it seems to work. So, yeah. No, it's okay. Uh, yeah, I, I know. Uh, and another thing, um, when I upload this, and I upload it right from Twitch to YouTube, which means I don't edit it, so you got to all the ads are going to be there. Sorry, I'm not. I don't have time, but it'll upload in 480. Then it'll re-upload and redo itself in 720 and higher. Oh, and so when okay. you watch it right off, when it's right at the beginning uploaded, it's going to look like crap. But then later on, and you come back, it'll be a higher resolution. Just oh, wow. a little thing on YouTube, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So the longer the longer the stream is, the longer it takes. So like a Thursday night game or Saturday night game may take 
two days after mm-hmm. it's uploaded for it to update. Normally, a two-hour thing like this takes 12 to 24 hours. So just so you're aware. So, but that's cool. Yeah, that's, that's good to hear, Anne. I'm, I'm happy yep. to hear that. Uh, yep. so. Yeah, it seems to be a good sort of... Sort of... They up, they actually up, must have upgraded the 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 line before they sent us the, the note because we got the the note yesterday and we got the stream Friday and I was like we don't get any dropped frames everything works great and then they sent us the note that we found in the mail that that we hey Tim are you there it. if you're there say Yala in chat I want to I want to ask you a question so I normally watch Gavin Monday nights after work on YouTube and it looks good. Oh, cool Fuzz that's awesome. Mm-hmm. And thanks for coming on tonight. Yeah, I know, like, you know, this is a weird off night, but um, yeah, it is, uh, you know, it's only this time of the year, football season or holidays or whatever uh, with the playoffs. And uh, it's a thing, you know, my wife and I and all our friends did. We had a great time last night, yesterday and last night. It was a real blast. Um, but we wanted to, I don't, I hate skipping days. So um, I'll ask Tim offline. I wanted to see if Tim, if we do that thing for uh, video games, his dad was the first one that introduced me to wizardry. Mm-hmm. So he also had an editor for it, which was really cool. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Fuzz. So Anna, um, we went through a lot of two E. We just yeah. We, we mm-hmm. went through a lot of two E stuff. I just said uh, I wanted to point out some references. Note. I, I don't even know if I want to do a, ever do a discussion on this, but you, look, my box is smashed on this battle system. We did like two major battle systems and I was like this yeah I'm not it. sure yeah, I sure. actually kept my copy of that one it, it might be sitting somewhere I might just have the booklets I'm not really sure I, I know I had one but we played around and tested it and I'm not really sure if I ended up being the caretaker of it so. oh definitely Curtis yeah. but I'm going to say this when this came out these are two of them uh, look 1495 this is 89 this is the battle system mini- miniatures mm-hmm. rules See where I'm going here. And then Skirmish's Miniatures Rule for Battle System. So these books, and, and like I don't know how they got the money for this. These are in color. Yeah, but well, they were desperate. I, 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 <laughs> must I, have been. Yeah. yeah um, I don't know. Yeah. But now you're going to see the brains really clicking. Oh, my gosh. Well, why can't I just run d and I don't need Battle System to do this. I can run Miniature mm-hmm. Play in d d with this. And that's when... You know, but they then, wanted to design a system, so you had to buy both the books and the miniatures and and all the the extra stuff. Right. It was not. It, yeah. But the miniatures were crappy back then. Now there were good Parthas, and there's some good Prince August and stuff. But for the most, and the Grenadiers, yeah. but they were was, all lead, and they're just. Oh, it yeah, wasn't they, until they, I don't know. Yeah, but sculpting was even more expensive back then than yeah. it is today, I think. And you yeah. didn't have the cool tools that you have today. 3D printing was not invented. Or or, or yeah, Z-Knife so. or any of the other yeah. stuff. Mm-hmm. And most of the miniatures repeat. You know, they were all re- repetition. It was the same miniature over yeah, and over Yeah, because and over. they were once yeah. they, they were enormously expensive to do the first one, so to speak, to, to yeah. set these metal um, things up so yeah and, and notice they put in like some of the uh the cardboard cutout ones they have from some of the adventures what just fell out mm-hmm. of this yeah oh this is a, a rules reference card i didn't even realize it was in there oh my gosh it was in the back i guess oh wow and this one's even rarer the skirmishes book right so i forget this added some special rules to it uh, added uh, individual champions, you know, added a, a little bit. They were really going. This is all before Chainmail even came out. So, you know, and then they redo, they redid it with uh, uh, with Chainmail rules. But there are there are a lot of scenarios in here. I mean, this is, what year is this? This is 90? This is 91. This is yeah. pretty damn good looking terrain for 1991. Look at that. Yeah. That's pretty impressive for, for, for 31 years ago, 32 years ago. Wasn't that what we heard that they actually just dumped that in a in, in a, a storage and then it got destroyed? All of that they built for for oh, I don't doubt promotion. It. That, yeah, that's when we we had oh, Ben Riggs and he he wrote that they just they just disposed of a lot of that stuff that just, would have been worth a lot of money today. Oh my gosh, yeah, yeah. Especially if uh, someone legendary had taught, you know, worked on it, you know. Oh yeah, and it was the one featured in these things, and and it was done original TSR had been used in Gen Con and and all these conventions back then and I mean, stuff. I mean, yeah, so, that's a yeah. better picture with all the yeah. The, that meaning that would have been just, priceless today. 
Well, we use wired. We use model train HO scale yeah. trees to start before Bill started yeah. making crafting his own. Oh, that's what we used all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, Woodland scenery. Oh yeah, yeah. That was available. So yeah. yeah. And uh, to make the roads, we use the dirt. You know, you put down the glue and you'd put the dirt down mm -hmm. until uh, you know. And and that that was the reason why I hooked up with Jeremy. Roads were the thing I never had, and I was like, we don't have. We have these, you know, train roads. That's it. Uh, and then when he came out with the roads, that was the connection right there. I was like, damn, I, I got roads finally. Um, so, yeah. But it was a time, a time run by people who had no had lo no love for them. Yeah, unfortunately. But I hope yeah. we got some stuff out of tonight. I know uh, I'm babbling a little bit here. Yeah, but... me, I babbled in the beginning a lot. So, so, so I compensate is we both babbled a lot. So hopefully there was some, some, some tidbits in this too. Yeah. Yeah. There were plastic, the, the plastic D and D middies out in the mid. Mm, no, there were. Well, there may have been, but the D and D plastic line by Wizards came out first in the year two thousand and ran through like two thousand eight oh, wow. and mm -hmm. nine, and they yeah. had those sets, and then they stopped them. Then Pathfinder came out with theirs, and then they brought them. They brought them back out, and they're the quality's going down and down and down. Now you see, I use a lot of those plastic miniatures to supplement our painted ones because, like the lizard men from the other night, I don't have forty painted lizard men, but I have a bunch of plastic ones. So Jay's cool. Oh, that's great, man. That's fantastic, Justinius. Yeah. Well, I'll see you there too. Great. Anna and I will see you there. So. Mm -hmm. We're looking forward to a lot yep. of uh, a fun times at Gary Con. I'm be super busy, but I'm really looking forward to seeing yep. everyone. Awesome. Yeah, I have to nail down my flight now. That's the thing. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I mean, styrofoam. Bill, Bill was, you know, we the first thing he got was that uh, cutter, that wire proxon cutter for a lot of that before. I mean, 3D printing and just in the last three years has really changed the game. The playing field really has made things a lot easier, a lot less time. So, yeah, man. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Cannot wait, Curtis. Looking forward to yeah. it. Yeah. There was an occasional mini in the mid nineties. Well, plastic is so tough because remember, plastic can sag and all in heat and things like that. You need five more printers. Yeah, but fairly, <laughs> you can't paint it all, man. That's the problem. Everything you got to paint it. That's the one thing we will not put out a printed thing, a three D printed thing, unless it's painted and done up. Bill won't don't have it, so. Hard plastic with two boxes, one with a fighter. Oh, okay. Hmm. I wonder who made them. Very possible. So. Yes, you should make that trip to Gary Con. It's awesome. We're gonna have a we're gonna have a great time. Oh, neat. Love to see pics of them. If you get pics of them, let me know. Or could that be great? All right. So Anna, uh, what what's going on here? Uh, well, yeah, well, I got my internet uh, upgraded, and I'm also uh, resetting my Facebook uh, and and stuff. I used to have two Facebook pages, so if anyone got confused a little bit, it's because I'm I'm actually I deleted it. I kept the one that had to almost two thousand likes, and the other one has like six hundred or seven hundred something. So I I skipped that one, and so now I only have one page. So so I'm going to paste the uh, the um, the uh, link to it in chat so so that will be my my home uh, future all the all the professional nice. stuff mapping and and all that so to speak so please if you want to get my attentions and messages link and stuff like that that will be my public profile and 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 the other one just my, my name that will be my private profile more and more going forward so to speak so that will be family stuff swedish politics and <laughs> and, and weird things that 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 no one else would be especially interested in so to speak so 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 uh, so this one will be where i post and and interact with with my the groups and and all the other stuff so to speak so so that will be my 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 home going forward so to speak so so that that's that's good to know and and yeah, so that is the big, and also uh, I put a there is a photography site where I up, upload my photography and stuff. But that's that's beside the point for 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 this uh, the, this podcast or, the, or this uh, stream here. And also, I'm big into uh, it's Photoshop week, so I've been photoshopping, 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 and now I'm really getting somewhere, and I'm getting up to speed and how I do it, and 
I figured out that my computer is actually powerful enough that I can edit pictures that are 64K, meaning 65,000 pixels across. I can edit them. I can do almost everything in, 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 in that. So I don't have to split it up. I tried that first and it works. And for some things I will probably do it, but I can actually edit things. So now I'm going over, um, I've gone over Shield Lens for a couple of days. Now I'm going to switch to Altamira and, and do that because I wanted to test things out in Shield Lens because if I screw it up, that's at least just my campaign map, nothing else. But now I'm pretty good idea on how it works on, on large image and it's it's not fast, but it's compared to the, the earlier uh, things. It's um, I'm I'm getting there fast, and the results I'm 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 blown away. This is good. This is cool. This is this is the type of maps that I've always dreamt of. So, my top patrons will start getting the first kind of in depth analysis with some some um, ideas and and thoughts around it, and and also some tech specs and 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 the first kind of. There will be a link to the files if you want to download and, and run it on, on I, I will put a link in it. It's 120 gigabyte in size. So I'm, I'm cool. warning you. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so anyone who wants to, 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 to get it on my top patrons, you can actually get, get a hold of, of this file. So you can kind of take a look at it if you want to try it, because I'm, I'm really desperate for people in the future to can help me edit because there's hours and hours and hours needed of Photoshop editing. Now, when I can actually crank out a lot of the 3D the, the stuff Be, before there was the, the my bottleneck was actually rendering the stuff now I can do that now the bottleneck becomes photoshopping so so if if a lot of the future projects actually come do uh, stuff then there might be openings for for even paid photoshop work for people who are so inclined in the future so we'll see that that's something but i'm just teasing the idea that it might be some projects come up that might be that i have to to hire help to 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 do some of this so 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 but it it's it's kind of cool it's a new ground the new generation of greyhawk maps are actually taking shape and and be going from one mile per per pixel to five feet per pixel, and they look awesome. So so they look way yes. better than I thought they would. And now we can start putting many. I can put individual trees and individual houses and trails and and stuff like that on there. So this is something I can work on forever, and it's really really cool. So the problem is that there are some other publishers who've seen this, and they also getting completely bonkers and want it too. So we'll see. Yeah. Of course they do. Of course they yeah. want it. Yeah. Like, so, so 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 we'll see. But what? Uh, how much? But it's it's kind of it's cool. It's a new era, and and thanks to Linda Booth, there will be other tie-ins to both GIS and 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 Unreal uh, game engines and stuff like that lined up in the future. So it's a lot of groundbreaking, literally and figuratively and virtually groundbreaking stuff happening, so to speak. So this is a lot of the setting the standards, and it's it's thanks to yeah, Linda. It's also now thanks to Troll Lord Game that we can do the Altamira box set that is will be the first kind of commercial use of this yes. and 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 thanks to my players and especially all my patrons who have loyally supported me with with money while I'm figuring this out for several years and now have a computer that I can actually work on it so so now it's starting to to take shape so so it's it's kind of it's I'm, I'm just blown away how cool this is so yeah so um thanks all for coming on a Monday night Wow, we're, Ooh, yeah, so um, <laughs> that, that's funny. I don't know, man. I, I, uh, that was that's the way it goes, Dave. Sometimes, right? Um, so uh, I don't know what we're doing. My brain is so off after like Sunday. I was gonna while I was watching the games and having people over. I I, I was under the delusion I was gonna start prepping for what I was gonna run Thursday night. Well, that didn't yeah. go well, and I've a lot of traveling up. So I have no idea what I'm doing Thursday. But, okay, but, but we, we figured Sunday. out what we're going to Wednesday. So yeah, we figured yeah, that out. But Wednesday we're good. So Wednesday yep. mm -hmm. we have um, and it's a good one. It's it a was good Mike one. Mike's idea again. And and, and I love too. this one. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was in his empire. All right, and we're going to talk about module references, history. So I will handle the module stuff, and I'm mm -hmm. relying on Anna and Mike to handle some of the the background data, the flan data yeah. for Anna. Mm -hmm. I will handle 
what happens to him in certain places. Like mm-hmm. he gets recaptured in a god trap. Did you know yeah. that a second time? Yep. So and 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 I have hey, a lot of JC. theories on on how you can use and tweak hey, this for hey, your Troy, campaign good to see too. You. So yep. So that'll be Hello, uh, Troy. that'll be on Wednesday. Then we'll have Thursday, and then Sunday night. My guess is we're going to do that RPG classic RPG. Uh, game, video games. I think that's. I I want to do something a little light. So maybe we'll do that on. We'll do that fun thing on Sunday. That would be really cool. Yeah. Also, um, the Monday after the Super Bowl will be the prelude show to the fundraiser. All right. Yeah. So I don't have a banner up for that yet. I'm looking for my other ones here. Legends fundraiser. Bo, 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 bo. Okay. So, but remember, 17th through the 19th, a special game. That will be for the count for the fundraiser is the Thursday before the 16th the night. My normal game, we're going to do a super high level one character each. It's uh, Monty Hall characters out with my group, Greyhawk thing. Wow. Oh, yeah. So I'll be this. That'll be. Uh, uh, by the way, Tiltify is open now. If you click, if you go down at the bottom and you click on that uh, picture uh, in the banners, that goes right to the fundraiser. Um, I don't expect anyone's donated yet. Nope, but it is up, and you could theoretically donate now, but it is up and ready. I wanted to get that going because ads are going to be linking to it coming up. So uh, just note um, that is um, that is coming. But we'll have a special game with my players on the 16th, Thursday night, before we start Saturday morning, uh, Friday morning, because we don't want to waste a gaming night. So we're just going to make it. Um, uh, we got some great people playing. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I know, I know, uh, I, I tried spreading out the players, but it just didn't work. Um, so, uh, I got Luke, Igax, Eric Mona, Ed Greenwood, Steven Chenault, and Bones and Darling in my game. They all wanted to play my, I was like, well, I gotta do say no. You know what I mean? So, uh, Richard Baker's playing in Blue Box, and, uh, Eric Menke's playing in Troller Games, so we do have some. Alyssa Faden, if she gets back from, uh, from Oh, yeah, she's we'll be... back in Britain again. Yeah, if she comes while. back from Britain in time, uh, we'll, we'll put yep. her in again, probably Jimmy Duffy's. So, yep. But other than that, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, next Friday, Linda and me will do another mapping, sitting awesome. mapping for a couple hours. Yeah, we'll see if we can squeeze another one in during, um, unannounced during the week, so to speak. So, so yeah. Very cool. Yeah, and uh, and uh, a week from Wednesday, Grand March, Living Greyhawk, the uh, the fifth. So that'll be the that'll be the two days before the fundraiser starts. So we got that week's gonna be packed with with content, completely packed. Uh, next week, so next week, leading up to it, yeah, the week leading up to it, because week after that, I am away in Texas for work. So, yeah, found that out two weeks ago. So yay! All right, let's do the giveaway here. Let's call. Someone's gonna win uh, their choice of two. Two uh, classics. If you don't have treasures, that's the one I always put out there. So, oh, oh look at that! The first uh, donation from uh, Alex Antiquitas to start oh, it wow. off. Oh wow! Thanks, Thank Alex. You. You're first. Awesome. You're first. We are up to ten dollars. Only ten thousand five hundred and thirty to tie last year's. So that's awesome, dude. Thanks, man. So it works. It works. It's a good test, dude. I I made sure it works and it's set in properly. So. Um, all right, here we go. I'm going to close it out. Oh my, Scott, Jeff. Scott's Jeff oh, again. Wow. Jeff, I just sent him dice from Saturday night. See, yeah. Wow. Yeah, you did, Jeff. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, and you, um, you have a lot of these, don't you? So I got to, I'll get with you. Do you have, um. Uh, oh my God! <laughs> we gotta talk about this sometime. Uh, Patrick, oh, oh, give me the yes. circle. Oh my God, it's bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> oh, you don't have any of them? All right, you want treasures? All right, so you got. I'm gonna give you treasures and uh, treasures and you have any, uh Oh, how about against the cold of the Hut reptile god and one? That's awesome. If you don't have that, yeah, let me know. And I'll give you That's those two. Two good ones. That's, yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, I'll get them out. So. Awesome, everyone. Let's raid into... Uh, all right, so Grace is doing her Troller game reading. So let's raid into Troller games. And then if you're sticking around, try and get them to raid into it, darling. All right? Sound good? Thank you, Casey. Oh, uh, yeah. 
And thank you, everyone. And I thank you, all, Chris Ray, and then everyone. Yep. I really appreciate you all coming on on Monday night. Thank you for mm -hmm. your understanding. Um, you know, I got, I do. Um, I'm a nerd, but I also have some other uh, things that I love to do, and my wife loves football too. So it's a, it's a win-win for me. All right, see you, see you Wednesday night. It's only one night off. Have a good one. Yep. Wrong button coming. <laughs> Wrong button coming. Thank you. Oh, she's done. Grace is done. Shit. Okay. Uh oh. Uh, all right. Well, well, then we'll just read into. Uh... I know Praters is on too. Guild Superiors on. Yeah, I read into Darling every Sunday. Though. Oh, I, uh, I didn't read into her last night. I didn't read into her last night. So there and you, you go. Can I'll... Read it yeah, I'll read right into yeah. her. That sounds good. I didn't read into her last night. It wasn't on. on. Duh. Plus, she uh, uh, played and had a great time. And had a fun time on Saturday. If you didn't watch it, um, that was crazy. That was a fun game uh, with the with the um, Slav Squad Squad. I ran Saturday. Okay. Thank you all for all that support too. Five, four, three, two, one. See you Wednesday night. Well, not too bad, considering it was an off night that not the normal time. Awesome. Thanks, Anna, for coming on Monday.